Little has chopped away on second place, taking it from Ricky Craven. Today, Dover Downs in another ride on the sometimes not so merry-go-round. brings you more Bush Series racing than TNN Motorsport. Today, live from Dover, Delaware, the Split Fire Spark Plug 200, presented by Track Auto. Here's the new look at Dover Downs this fall. At the entrance to the front straightaway, a brand new grandstand and a new VIP tower doubling. And the number and capacity of the luxury box suites here at Dover Downs, fast becoming one of the East Coast's most popular racetracks. And after the race we had here in June, Easy to see why. Very competitive event and an awful lot of action. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Joy. Kind of a nice day here today in Dover, but there is a weather front moving in. Awfully windy right now, and there's rain clouds on the horizon, so let's get right to it. A familiar face and a nice surprise. Man on the pole. Let's meet him with Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, when you talk about reversal of fortune, you got to consider Harry Gant. He took the same race car with the same engine prepared by the same crew to Richmond last week. He didn't even make the race. Today... He set a new track record starting from the pole position. That's a pretty good turnaround. Well, uh, the first time I raced this car over in uh, Bristol, we still on the pole. Then last week, we didn't make the race, and this week, we're on the pole. So, I don't know what that tells you. I guess this car likes a high-bang track better. Well, Harry Gant does, too. You like this place. Well, it's been pretty good to us. You know, we had some rough bangs here, but uh, one good many races here. I hope today will be a one we can add to it before we have been our last time here and uh, leave here with a winning note. That'd be good, wouldn't it? It would be good. Good luck to Harry. Guy on the outside pole, Ricky Craven, also a strong threat here today. Now let's go back to row three with Randy Pemberton. Well, a guy that certainly hopes he's a threat here today is Robert Presley. He'll start fifth. Nobody needs an upfront run more than Robert does. In his last seven starts, two 15th place finishes. Robert, uh, can you, could you, will you turn it around today for this team? I think so. You know, we're running awful good in practice. This racetrack's been good to us. One, two, finished second twice. We got one small problem. It's that old man on the front row up there. You know, he's uh, he's in the league by himself right now. But if we can somehow wear him out, I think we can do it. Okay, there's Robert Presley. A bunch of guys here with a lot to prove here at Dover Downs this afternoon. We're back to see who proves what with the Split Fire 200 right after this. Coverage of the Split Fire Spark Plug 200 presented by Track Auto on TNN is brought to you by... Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. By Split Fire, the patented performance spark plug. It only costs more till you use it. By Stanley, since 1843, Stanley has been helping people do things right. And by Purolator. Legends live on Purolator. There are just four races to go in the Bush Series for 1994, and David Green has about a 200-point lead. Uh, but packed right in behind, 130-point lead, that is, there are four drivers within 80 points as we come here to Dover. So, my question to you, Darrell Waltrip, how tough a place is this to preserve a point lead or to try to eat into one? Well, I, I think there's one word that, that kind of explains it all. That word is, is experience, or as a friend of mine likes to say, experience. Experience is going to be the difference in uh, who wins this championship, I think. With the races we got coming up, tracks we got to go to, I believe David Green, with the Labonte experience and David's experience at these racetracks will be the key factor to him winning this championship. But if he gives any part of it away, any of those other four drivers can pounce on the point lead. Buddy Baker, what's the most treacherous part of this race? The treacherous part of this race is the yellow flag. Right after a yellow flag, everybody doubles up, lap cars go to the inside. The preferred line is around the bottom of the racetrack. So it's very crucial to have good track position, be very aggressive on restart. They have fired the engines at Dover Downs. 
TNN's exclusive live coverage continues after this. Welcome back to Dover Downs. They've fired engines and getting ready to roll out on the pace lap. Let's have a look at the diehard starting grid for today's race. Harry Gant has his 14th career pole in the Bush Series. He's won here twice. On the outside pole, Ricky Craven, runner-up here one year ago. Row number two, Bobby Labonte, the 91 Series champ. Outside of row number two, the defending Bush Series champ, finished fifth last week at Richmond. Row number three, Robert Presley won both Dover races in 92. Outside, Dave Resendiz has his best qualifying effort of the season. Row number four, Kenny Wallace, winner at Bristol and Richmond. And alongside is Kevin LePage, first top 10 start for the Vermont rookie. Row number five, David Green with a 133-point lead. And outside the fifth row, Mike Wallace, who got his first career win here in June. Row number six, Terry Labonte, a three-time winner this year, and Dick Trickle with two fifth-place finishes. Row seven, Mike McLaughlin with eight top tens, and Larry Pearson had three straight seconds here. Row number eight, Elton Sawyer, who won at Myrtle Beach, and Phil Parsons, who won at Charlotte in May. Row number nine, Randy LaJoy, looking for his first top ten since Hickory in April. And Bobby Hillen, who won here in 1988. Michael Waltrip is in Dale Earnhardt's car. He's won here twice. Johnny Benson Jr. is up to ninth in the point standing. Rodney Combs makes his fifth start here at Dover Downs. Jason Keller had three top tens in a row. Chad Little moves up to second in the points, and Jeff Green, third at Bristol in April. Tim Fedor with seven top tens this year, and Dennis Setzer with two victories, the top rookie. Stevie Reeves, USAC Midget Champ, and Tommy Ellis with two seconds here. Row 15, George Crenshaw, third start of the year, and Randy McDonald returns to the circuit from Canada. Tracy Leslie ran third here a year ago, and Joe Bessie makes his first start since Charlotte. Jim Bound makes his second run here at Dover, and Doug Hebron has finished fourth at Hickory. Dale Jarrett has finished fourth three times here, and Bobby Dodder sixth of the points. And it's Tommy Houston with seven top tens here, and Patty Moise, who finished on the lead lap at Michigan. Troy Beebe from California, first start this year. And Dick Toby Tobias Jr. makes his first push start. Hermie Sadler had trouble in qualifying. He's ranked fifth in points. Brian Donnelly from Maryland makes his Bush Series debut. Let's get an update on Hermie Sadler. Here's Randy. Well, we're checking to find out what's wrong with Hermie's car. He was going to take a provisional start anyway. There he is going now. Maybe he had to realign the steering wheel as is so frequent with the Cup drivers. They have just one position. But a little story about Hermie Sadler. He'll take a provisional today. He was the quickest car out there in practice yesterday. Went out to qualify. Car did not come up to speed. Did not take the green flag. They did not have a practice session this morning. They didn't know what was wrong with the car. They changed engines, changed two coils, find out both of the coils were bad in that car. They changed everything but the driver, so they hopefully they have the problem corrected. But get this, guys, changed everything but the driver. They may have to change that soon because rumors up and down pit road this morning, Hermie Sadler will now leave that team at the end of the 1994 season. His uh, speculation is he'll start with his own team, possibly go to another car next year. Thanks, Randy. A definitive announcement expected at the end of today. We'll be riding along with Ricky Craven and the DuPont Automotive finishes Chevrolet. There's the view from the outside pole. Looking ahead of the Trans Am safety car. And there's a look at Ricky ready to go to work. And a look for green this time. Harry Gant on the pole for the 14th time in Bush Series action. He is always a contender here at Dover Down. And green is on. We're racing in Delaware. One Ooh, car in the wall hard is that Tobias. And Patty Moise gets spun to miss the incident car. And caution will, of course, wave. Tough break for Patty Moise. Mike, that was just what I was talking about on restarts or green flag start here when everybody's running uh, double file down through there. One car can touch and miss the chain reaction. there buddy guys are normally mind their manners a little bit better than that on the coming to get the caution and everybody wants to get in front of somebody my mistake the car involved with joe bessie with the car that look at the very top of your screen that's his car just you know guys. i don't know i gotta tell you what that looks like that looks like uh maybe he started accelerating the rear end broke loose and just turned him into the wall because of the extreme banking there well the shopper chevy of joe bessie will be headed pit side we'll cover that when we come back Hey, 
Where's the picture? There's no picture. Did you see the picture come out? How can that be a Polaroid camera if there's no picture? It doesn't look like a Polaroid camera. It's not a Polaroid camera. Presenting the Polaroid Captiva. It's sleek, it's stylish. It's pocket-sized pictures stay in a special compartment till you take them out. So you're free to shoot and shoot. Maybe if you shake it. Yeah, shake the camera. The Polaroid Captiva. The pictures stay in till you take them out. I bought my car new in 1970. I drove a hockey team 190 mile round trip three times a week. Avalon Formula 3 from Texaco. And when I reached 300,000, I thought, I've got to be a pretty good car. No other leading motor oil offers more complete protection to help your car run better, last longer. At 600,000, I thought, maybe it could be the Havilland. Havilland Formula 3. Add more life to your car. Get a free Havilland racing cap of your choice when you buy a case of Havilland. 5G's hurts. When the car fires up, it's power. It's talking to me. All I hear is music. When you hit the throttle, it pulls your head back and it wants to rip it off. It's you, and the competition, and everything has to be just right. Pure oil now. Man, from that time on, all you can think about is winning. Pure oil later. Man, that's a ride. Legend live. At Stanley, we test the quality of our sliding mirror doors by opening and closing them over 100,000 times. This doesn't make for great entertainment, but it does make a great closet door. The Accent Mirror Door from Stanley. If you think this is a broad selection of tires, wait till you go to Pep Boys. Get $40 back on a set of four Michelin, Uniroyal, or Futura tires. $20 back on any two. Come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. Welcome back to Dover. One lap will go racing. Single file. Also stopping, along with the incident cars, Hermie Sadler and Bobby Dodder, fifth and sixth in the point standing. Here's Glenn. Well, Mike, it must have been a chain reaction. I couldn't see it, but uh, Dodder's back end was caved in. Sadler's front end was caved in. So, being the genius I am, I think that he got into the back, that Hermie got into the back of Bobby when they all uh, backed up there when Patty Moise and Joe Bessie had their problems. Primarily sheet metal damage. Uh, Dodder pulled the Coons pulled the fenders away from his car on the rear. Hermie Sadler still did likewise on the front end. I think it was all cosmetic. It didn't look like anything serious. They're both back out on the track. Thanks, Glenn. Here's another look at it. Well, Darrell, you made a, a comment just a second ago that he might not have scrubbed the tires off really good. Now, that's a chain reaction there yeah. where the 50 got in the side of him there. That's Tobias. You see Patty Maurice going round and round just in front of 97 car yeah but I, the thing is buddy i mean we're not even up to speed here we're in third gear and look how much damage was done to those race cars and not like you and i were talking i believe it was something on the tires and he gassed it and it spun with it well that's not hard to do here is it? no if you look at that black line around there where the cars are right now anything above that is like getting in water and ice and oil and it's slick and here you see how banked even the straightaway is yeah it's so very tough to get up to speed here in good order Obviously. <laughs> We're under green. Hopefully this time to stay at lap four. Harry Gant leading from Ricky Craven, Bobby Labonte, Steve Grissom, and Robert Presley, the top five. Dave Rosendi's in sixth. Kenny Wallace, seventh. Kevin LePage in eighth. Going down that straightaway. I didn't realize how fast they run down the straightaway here until yesterday. I was waiting at the gate on the front straightaway and a car come by there and it was like an explosion when it went by. Yeah, a lot of straightaway speed. I'd say 160 miles an hour probably. Watching for second place Ricky Craven. And shortly he'll have company in his mirror. Bobby Labonte dropped back to fifth as Steve Grissom and Robert Presley went past. You'll see an occasional spark off these cars going through turn one and two. There's a couple of bumps getting into turn one where the chassis actually hits the racetrack itself. There's Grissom and Presley. Trying to gain some ground up on the two leader. Work continues on Caddy Moise's car on pit road. Everyone else has returned to the race from that lap one incident. You see Steve Grissom there. He hasn't won well the last weekend. He ran fifth in the uh, Bush Grand National race on Friday night, and Saturday night ran seventh in this Winston Cup car. So he had a real nice weekend at Richmond. Yeah, and he always runs well here at Dover in that car, too, in that 31 car. So he could have another big weekend. 
I think he's a driver that's uh, gaining experience and uh, really getting the confidence as far as cup racing goes. And coming back and running these bush races, I think it's a plus point, too. A lot of smoke out of one car coming off the fourth corner. I believe that's Tracy Leslie in the Detroit gasket machine. And he is receiving the black flag. Back straightaway battle, Mike McLaughlin with the 64 car. Usually that's Jimmy Spencer aboard. But this weekend, Dick Trickle takes the ride. That's Kenny Wallace leading that group right there in the black number eight. And just behind him is the current point leader, David Green, as they go in the corner. David's pretty happy right where he's at. I'm sure he's not going to do anything to jeopardize his situation as far as points early in the race. Trickle backing up a bit in the Duraloop Chevy. Larry Pearson. Stanley Tools 92 underneath. Larry Pearson's run so well this year. He's going to win sooner or later. I, I'm surprised that he hadn't won already this year. Maybe sooner, buddy, but not later. Only three races left after today. Good point. Yep. <laughs> Martinsville, or Charlotte, Martinsville, and Rockingham. That's all that's left to the Bush season after this afternoon. And, uh, Mike, the big plus to being on the out front, like Harry is, is he's coming up to lap cars already. And uh, we're in our 10th lap, 11th lap of the race here. So guys that start at the back of the field, they will be in jeopardy going lap down real quick if they don't get a call. You can see Dick Trickle right there on the outside of the racetrack. When they get on the high side there, they lose so many positions. You see him trying to get back down low because if he don't get down, these cars will go by him. He'll get 15, 20 cars past him before he ever gets back in the low group. Bill Parsons went past the Matchbox car, and now Trickle comes up on Randy LaJoy. The number 20, Tina Chevy. Dave Rosendis and Kevin LePage. Good to see those two drivers running up front. Kevin said those Hoosiers are working just fine for him. He's running quite well. I think he qualified fifth, if I'm not mistaken, and he's right up there in the fray right now. Yeah, that old teddy bear car. Uh, we haven't said a lot about him since early in the year. He had some good runs early in the year, but uh, haven't heard a lot from him lately. But it's good to see him back up there running. He was uh, he was fifth when he ran. When qualifying ended, he lined up in eighth position. But uh, had, a, had a really outstanding run. And Resendiz as well. Best start for him this year in the Lipton T car. Mike Wallace. As they get the measure of Robert Presley. This, uh, or rather, the 95 car. Lapping the 95 car. Brian Donnelly. This batch is uh, five seconds behind the race leader. The last car in that group, the 14 car there, is Terry Labonte, a two-time winner on the circuit this year. We'll be a threat here before the day is over. I guarantee you, this is one of those kind of races where Terry will uh, take care of his car and take care of his tires, and he'll be somebody to deal with when the race gets down near the end. He's not going to race anybody right now. Third place battle, Robert Presley. Cincinnati Millicron, number 35, has a look under Steve Grissom, makes the pass. See, Mike, some of these cars will start off, they'll run real good early on, but as the track changes and the tire wears a little bit, uh, you'll see some cars that are not running up near the front, they'll take off and start chasing the leaders down. The track changes a little bit and the cars change a lot. You've got to set the car up a little on the snug side here for the long run. Up front, Ricky Craven and Harry Gant. I believe Ricky Craven might be just a little faster than Harry right now. He's pulled down about five or six car lengths in the last two laps, and he's all over the back of Harry, but catching a car here and getting by him is one other thing. The lap pass, Randy McDonald. Talked to Ricky about an hour before the race. He says he's not exactly sure yet what he will do in 1995, but he did confirm the phone at his house has been ringing a lot. Yeah, he's a, he's a talented young man. A likable young man, and uh, I, he has a bright future in uh, racing, whatever he decides to do, whether it's Bush or if he decides to move into Winston Cup. He says he wants to go Winston Cup, but it's a question of timing, and is this the right time? He has not made that decision yet, but yeah. he certainly has offered. He's just he's got he's gained a lot of knowledge and experience over the last year and a half, and having his own team has also taught him a lot. So he's a guy that's going to step up. He's a star of the future. You know what he told me? He said if it weren't for DuPont, the decision would have been easy. He said they've been such a great company to work with. He wants to stay with them. He thinks they have quite a future together. But he's still evaluating his options for next year. Yeah. Well, you don't want to move too quick. Right. Just looking at Ricky Craven's car, he is getting in the corner really, really well right now. He's pulling about four or five car lengths up on Harry Gant, getting in the corner. Right about now, you are seeing gain up on him. Harry gets off the corner pretty well. Boy, a little further back in the field, there is a tremendous race for, I don't know, about 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, somewhere back in there. There's about 15 cars. All, I believe Kenny Wallace may be holding that crowd up just a little bit. 
they, they are doing. It's a huge pack of cars, and they are doing some heavy, heavy racing. Well, that's something you don't see very much of. Kenny Wallace holding anything up. Well, he, I don't. He's run so yeah, well this year. I, I shouldn't say that. He happens to be the lead car in that pack. Something's holding that crowd up. Too. Well, they've caught Dave Rosendis now on the look at P4. It's so hard to pass that you got to believe when you see that many cars lined up that close together that something's keeping them from going on. We'll see. All the way back to uh, Dick Trickle. That's yeah, for the for Sarah and Jessica now, girls. Uncle Mike's driving that black car today. I know it's going to be a little hard for y'all to to cheer for that black number three <laughs> car, but <laughs> Uncle Mike's driving that black car today. So don't be looking for that yellow car today. Well, that's high concept. Woo. I think they get the picture, though. Yeah. Uh-oh, Uncle Mike just slowed down. Uncle Mike just dropped off the face. Oh, look at the smoke in front here. And one car has lost an engine in front of Harry Gant there. It's the sixth car of Tommy. In the wall. Tommy Turn Houston. two. Oh, hard. Hard. Robert Presley. Goodness. It's not over yet. They're still piling in there. Oh, guys. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Tobias just misses him, and here comes the fleet. Man. Oh, that was a hard hit. You know, Daryl, uh, driving it away. Seven years ago, that would have been a massive pileup, but with the spotters and everything, they let the drivers know that there's problems on coming off turn two. That has been one of the most safety minded things that's ever been done to racing. Yeah, I, I can't believe he is driving this car back to the pits after the hit it took. Well, well, that's all he's going to do is come back to the pits. He just don't want to have to walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Because he has got it, <laughs> he's got it in bad shape. That's too bad. Because he was looking forward to a good day, I know. Well, here's the aftermath of it. Well, he's by himself yeah. there. The car gets out, but if you notice, there was a car with a blown motor going down the back straightaway. He may have got in some oil there coming off turn two. Could have the three car slowed uh, just just prior to this happening. I don't know if anything happens. So, now, look boy, at this right here is. Uh, this is when I was hollering, whoa, whoa, whoa. Boy, that's close. Now, it, it, even it, the guys are doing the best they can to get the car slowed down, but they're going everywhere and they're trying to slow down. You gotta remember, folks, we run 160 mile an hour around this place. Burnt piston uh, for Michael Walter. Yeah, that's all for that car then. And the report on the Tracy Leslie car was a uh, loose oil filler cap. In that car while he was black black he's back out there well if that's the case and maybe he drops well, that was some time back that was some time back on the leslie car i see so we are under the second caution of the day and we'll sort it all out when we come back right. <laughs> Kawasaki RFD for real fall deals on the toughest ATVs in these parts. Nowadays, if you fish and hunt, you've got to go deep. That's where my Kawasaki ATV comes in. It gets me where I want to go and back again. Where you want to go is your participating Kawasaki dealer. For real fall deals, including a free home light chainsaw, Kawasaki RFD. Only at participating dealers. Granny's 2095 17th Street in Sarasota. Trucks, minivans, minivans, minivans. How about caravans from $4,900? 88 from $4,900? Get your head knocked off anywhere in town for $69 or $79 on that one. How about a gorgeous one-owner local Eddie Bauer Bronco? Bronco 2, like brand new, local one-owner. Eat your heart out competition. Or how about this Dodge Ram 150, 92? Folks, save $5,000 on this one. Local one-owner, 24,000 miles. Tom Stimus, number one. Well, not only the Bush, but the Winston Cup Series winding the conclusion. Tune into TNN tomorrow, live at noon Eastern time. Winston Cup Racing from right here at Dover Downs, Delaware. Split fire 500. You know, Mike, there's so much going on on pit road right now with all kinds of different cars on the pit lane here with some smoking. I, I just got to believe that Robert got in some oil up there in turn, turn two. That car took off too quickly for him not to have a problem. 
Well, but, Ed, they're still checking the sex car here. I just wonder, he was in the vicinity of all the oil that I noticed coming out of the car, but I'm not sure it was the sex car. Let's get Randy Pemberton. He has Robert Presley. Well, as you can see, the Millicry car is all torn up. He is, uh, Robert Presley has pulled it behind the garage. Uh, Robert absolutely just killed it. Not a way to turn the, the bad luck around. No, this wasn't the day to turn it around, but, you know, it fell awful good. This Mike Laughlin race car is my fourth race in it, and finally got on Goodyear tires this weekend and you know we got to start up front and running like two tenths quicker in hurry but just being patient and, you know <laughs> it's gonna change tough break Robert Glenn Jarrett well Randy Chad Little brought his car in for a chassis adjustment I first thought they were gonna change tires but uh, they didn't do that they took the right rear off uh, they went up and then put a rubber under the right rear uh, of his uh, car to, to stiffen up the right rear so evidently the car was pushing a little bit the tire rule for today is two tires per position under caution. So that's two full sets that they can do. That's a pretty good tire rule. They all like that. They can change left side and right side twice. So I haven't seen any tire changes yet. Like I said, Chad Little just made a chassis adjustment. Thanks, Glenn. Patty Moe is going behind the wall. And this car has, in the Bush Series has failed to finish five of its last seven races. Yeah, they have, they've had a lot of engine trouble with the car. I'm not sure why. I know it's not from uh, lack of trying, because Dale puts a lot of effort in that car. Darrell, it's very unusual to see a car burn a piston in a weather like this when it's good and moist and, and really warm like this. It just don't happen. Well, the, believe it or not, the barometer is quite a bit different from what it was yesterday. And uh, these guys didn't get to practice this morning, and they may not have got to change the jets or the plugs and the engines the way they would like to have had them for the race. So uh, we noticed this morning there was a huge difference. We got a front moving in, uh, a little low pressure right now, and the air is actually better right now than it was this time yesterday getting ready for the restart tommy houston had a loose fitting on the oil cooler that may have been a lot of that smoke we saw down in turn one they have repaired that and we're back under green boy harry didn't get a, good, a very good restart there uh, tracy leslie just shot right past him and uh, trying to get a lap back there i guess Mike, you can see all the cars that were on the outside of the racetrack there. They had to start on the, on the outside there. They just slowed way down because it's so treacherous there. You can get into trouble in just a moment. Very narrow grooves. Speedway officials here have announced they will concrete the entire surface. Yeah, I think that's, right. that's going to be a real plus, Mike. Uh, they did it to Bristol, and uh, the, the track keeps breaking up and tearing up. It's been patched and fixed so many times. Uh, hopefully that'll, that'll solve some of the problems with the surface of the racetrack. Then if we can talk them into trouble in one. George Crenshaw was turned around and slapped the wall. We're under caution. Tracy Leslie, he was the benefactor of that. Yeah, he'll get one of his laps back. He was nearly three laps down. So he'll go to the tail end of two laps down. There is the Campbell soup can opened up. Yes. Add two cans of water on the stove. look at George making his third start whoa George Bush series today and perhaps finished for the day. Not too good. Well, maybe. Not awful. I don't know maybe it's, not it's tracking pretty straight there with the rear housing and all you know it's tough when we go to a place like this say well that's not a bad wreck he only <laughs> tore one side <laughs> yeah. off it yeah. the Crenshaw's crew will try to get him back into the race and we'll look for green flag when we come back from this commercial break Monroe Sensitrack. Road sensing shocks and struts. Designed to give you extra control during a swerve. Extra control over rough roads. Monroe Sensitrack gives you both extra control and ride comfort automatically. Monroe Sensitrack. Like two shocks in one. Call 1-800-STRUT now for a Monroe Sensitrack dealer near you. It's chasing after something you may never catch. It's hit or miss. And some days it's more miss. It's disappointing. It's dangerous. It's never, ever boring. In other words, it's exactly like a cowboy's life. At Wrangler, we know cowboys. Our genes were invented by them. Wrangler, the Western original. Sheltered Miller Genuine Draft, the cold one. 
For those who've discovered its smooth draft taste. You know, I've been looking for that. The world is a very cool place. So get out of the old and get into the cold. Every day we all find a way. A promise. Napa, we're the most complete source for auto parts. And all Napa parts are backed by a nationwide warranty program. No wonder more Americans trust Napa to keep their vehicles running. We keep America running. We keep America running. Today's exclusive coverage of the Splitfire Spark Plug 200 on TNN is brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. Jason Keller was in the pits with the hood up. They're still working on the left rear of George Crenshaw's car. Mike Wallace, the FTD brake Chevy of Barry Owen, was in the pits. He was running sixth, and they lifted the hood on his car. He'll go to the back for the restart, and also Kenny Wallace making a stop. I tell you guys made a tremendous move. I don't know how he did it, but Hermie Sadler started dead last, was in that crash on the opening lap, and he's up to 20 from 42nd. So he is a man on the move. And looking to eat into David Green's point lead, he is fifth in the points, one behind Kenny Wallace for a restart this time. Kenny Wallace came in and uh, worked on his car. Did Glenn tell us what he was doing? Well, the first time it was tight, and then this time it was loose. Oh, I hate a car like that. <laughs> Daryl, don't you love this, where the fast cars start on the inside here oh, instead of the outside? Boy, that makes you feel real comfortable on a restart. I know Tracy Leslie is going to try to get that jump on Harry again again, and he's trying to make his way down inside of Harry, but he's not having part of that this time. Leslie will stay two laps down, and Gant gets the squirt away from Craven just a bit. Steve Grissom in third. And moving up. Behind him, Bobby Labonte. Yeah, Bobby Labonte is running super well. He's moving right up on the back of Grissom. The car seems to be getting around the corners very well. That's Kevin LePage going through there in the 71 oh. car. Yeah, he's fit. He's uh, up about fit. Man, he's... Hermie Sadler going after Dick Trickle in the Guru Loop 64 and moving up on Rodney Combs. Spinning is Grissom in turn four, and he gets the concrete. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, stay oh. up. Easy, boys. Easy, boys. Whoa. They've got a lot of fluid coming out of that car there. He probably punctured the uh, radiator. Buddy, perhaps the, did, if he hit it back then, perhaps the fuel cell. I don't see any fluid before the impact no. with the wall. It's not the fuel cell, no? Mike. Uh, it's something... It's, it's it's oil out of the motor, or water out of the motor. Oh, there. Yeah. 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 Wow. You talk about letting one go. I think that's a six owner. It blew up like an eight owner. Now watch the front end flap right here. That's where the fluid starts uh, running. Yep. And the hits just keep on coming here at Dover. An unforgiving racetrack, if ever there was one. We'll be right back. You know, working at AutoZone is more than just looking up parts or ringing up sales. Most of all, is listening. Because my customers know more about their cars than I'll ever know. They know every rattle by heart. I mean, that car is their baby. So when they got a problem they're going to fix themselves, I'm going to do my best to help them get whatever they need, no matter what it takes. Because people like that, they don't deserve anything less than the best I can give them. the job is tough, you need the best. And when you need the best, you reach for Channel Lock. For the power. The precision. For just plain counting on, there's only one. Channel Lock. Be sure you're getting genuine Channel Lock tools. Look for this trademark. Monroe Sensitrack. Road sensing shocks and struts. Designed to give you extra control during a swerve. Extra control over rough roads. Monroe Sensitrack gives you both extra control and ride comfort automatically. 
Monroe Sensatrack, like two shocks in one. Call 1-800-STRUT now for a Monroe Sensatrack dealer near you. Saturday on TNN Motorsport. In last year's New England Racing debut, Winston Cup etched a lasting impression right from the start. Then the racing got real as the stock car stars convincingly christened the track. In the end, Rusty Wallace won the race and Winston Cup won their hearts. From the New Hampshire International Speedway, the Slick 5300, 4 p.m. 3 Central. And it all happens here on your motorsports network, TNN. Hi, I'm Shannon, and tonight on the Country Music Video Album Hour, we're hanging with the hottest thing to ever come out of Flatwoods, Kentucky. You know him and you love him, Billy Ray Cyrus. My fans live this music. Find out how and why country supersonic star rocketed to the top and how he plans on staying there, Billy Ray Cyrus. Tonight on the Country Music Video Album Hour, it doesn't get any better than this. Country Music Video Album Hour on TNN, the Nashville Network, tonight. Welcome back to Dover Downs. Caution still on the speedway. Tommy Ellis makes another pit stop for a chassis adjustment at the rear. Mike Wallace has been in. Jim Bowne has been in twice. And Glenn Jarrett is down at Kenny Wallace's car. Well, Kenny, Kenny Wallace brings his car back in for the second time under this caution period. He's still complaining the car is really bad loose. They've got a jack stand out here. Right now, they've got some guys up underneath the rear changing the track bar. They're also going to put a rubber probably take a rubber out of the left front they put one in the right front a while ago to try to uh loosen the car up a little bit he's uh, excuse me try to tighten the car up he absolutely cannot cannot turn the car getting in the corner i've watched him i'm standing down here going into turn one car turns sideways every time he enters the corner that ain't no fun here but they said they were going to do everything they can to try to tighten the car up for him one lap to go will go green two things have happened with that team this week one is car owner phil martossi shaved off his long time mustache which he said he'd do if they ever won again and he did at Richmond. And uh, Tuesday, we finally figured out what the big red dog was on that car. Um, it stands for Red Dog Beer, their new sponsor, a premium beer from uh, a subsidiary of Miller Brewing that makes Ice House. And uh, Kenny, he still had a hole in his lip from where he had to bite it last Friday night in Victory <laughs> Lane. He says, I want to tell you, but I just can't. They made the announcement Tuesday. Let's go to Randy for an update on Tommy Houston. Well, Tommy Houston's tough weekend continues. He damaged the car uh, terribly on Friday here, had to go to a backup car. So far this afternoon, broke a power steering line. The only thing could be worse that he's running 500 laps instead of 200 laps. They went back to the backup car to try to get a line on it and uh, fix it up. But boy, no power steering here, Daryl, buddy. Wow, well, I guarantee you this racetrack's hard when everything's working perfectly. But going back to Kenny Wallace, having to go in that corner sideways on a radial tire, that is really trouble. Now, no bias fly tire, you can kind of sling the car around. It'd take a second bite. But now, when it gets sideways, you're in a lot of trouble. I did notice also, uh, speaking of trouble, I don't know how much it is, but the 44 car, point leader, has got a little damage on the right side of his car where he either got into someone or into the wall. I can't tell which, but all of the white or all the yellow Goodyear letters are worn off the right rear tire right now. David Green, the point leader, is ninth. Second place point man Chad Little right now is running 21st. Ricky Craven, third in points, in second place. Kenny Wallace at the back of the field, and Hermie Sadler is 15th after starting 42nd. That's where the top five in points are as we restart. You see Tracy Leslie on the outside there trying to make up another lap. I don't think Gantz is going to give it back to him this time. He's going to race him hard. You see Ricky Craven coming up under Leslie there, but he couldn't quite make the move. Tracy Leslie's car is really fast. Trouble on the point leader, David Green. They are streaming past him in the back straight away. That car just did not come up to speed. I, I, I'd almost bet he's got a flat tire, but I don't know for sure. Green I, I noticed that damage on the right side of the car, and uh, it could be that's what it is. He had a 130-point lead coming here to Dover. He is now at the tail end of the field. It looks like he's back down on the low side of the racetrack. If he had a flat tire, he'd probably be up high trying to get out of the way. What I think right now is he may want to feel this car out before he gets back up. You know, he's coming in the pit. He's he could, slowing down right now. But he couldn't get in the pit. He was hung on the outside, and the traffic was so so tight that he couldn't turn into the pit, so he just had to ride around one lap. This pit confirms a flat tire. What a tough break for the point leader. As we discussed at the top of the show, Right, it is David Green series, 130-point lead, and he may give a bit of it away right here. Glenn Jarrett. 
Well, Mike David Green reluctantly brings the Slim Jim Chevrolet slowly down pit road. He's all the way down at the, at the far end, so I know that was a long trip for him. Daryl, you hit it right on the nose. He does have a flat right side tire. That's the problem. He got into something, got up too high, and cut the right rear tire down. So really tough break for him early on. They do go ahead and put the gas in and change both right side tires. He's down and away. Good stop, 12 and a half seconds. Harry Gant shoots past Dick Tobias Jr. And the number 95 Brian Donnelly car. Well, it's, that's too bad. You see, Bobby Labonte has already moved into third place here. He's got that race car running quite well right at the moment. He'd rather it be the other Labonte-owned car. Yeah, the one David Green is in. Chasing points here. You know the good part, Daryl, is the outer tire went flat, not the inner tire, so it didn't tear up all the in inner panels and everything under the wheel there. Chad Little second in points, 19th place right now. Forty-five of two hundred laps complete. After that stop, the 44 car he fell back to 34 spot, two laps in. So he's got his work cut out for him. It's a lot of points between there and the front of the pack. It really is, and he's uh, a half lap behind the leaders right now to even think about trying to catch him and get a lap back. But the way the race has gone with so many cautions, he might be able to get back up there and do it. Hermy Sadler trying to move up. He's on Bobby Hill in the 12th place car. Boy, Hermie Sadler's car is running quite well. He's had some engine trouble in the past four or five races. It looks like the car is really fast in the corners and going down the straightaway well, so this car is moving right on up in the standing. Yeah, he just passed the 99 car. And, you know, buddy, they said they changed everything on the car this morning, uh, ignition, the engine, everything. Maybe they ought to do that more often because that thing is flying. I mean, the man has come through the field in a hurry. Well, before he lost the motor yesterday for qualifying, he was the fastest car out here. So the car has been good since he got here. He just had engine trouble. Now the battle for fifth place. Mike McLaughlin and Terry Labonte. This one's been going on since the last restart. They are five seconds behind the leader. Napa, we keep America running. Here's how they're running. Mike McLaughlin has had several top 10 finishes of late in the Fiddle Saddle car. This is the car that Todd Bodine won with twice at Dover. Terry Labonte, two-time winner this year. Good battle. Yeah, Mike Mike told uh, me a little earlier in the, in the week that he was just really getting comfortable in that car, that he had felt like he had uh, maybe struggled a little bit at times in that car, but he's just now really getting comfortable and starting to really race in it, not learning how to race it. You see Terry Labonte is so much faster getting in the corner, but right in the middle of the corner, McLaughlin starts down across the racetrack, and he has to check up, uh, Labonte does, or run into him. And turn one and two is where it really shows up. Take you back up front where Harry Gant holds off Ricky Craven. Interesting run. Two names in the top five we don't normally see up there a lot. Kevin LePage running third, Mike McLaughlin. Right at fourth now, as he's been passed by Bobby Labonte, Mike McLaughlin in fifth. Both having good runs today. Quarter distance, 50 laps. They're all these two cars look like they're very evenly matched. It looks like Ricky Craven may be waiting just a little bit. I think he has a fast race car. He moved in on Harry Gap four or five times during the race here, and he's tough. You know, we saw uh, we saw Cravens run good here in the spring race and uh, had a shot at winning. I think he got off on his tire strategy in that particular race. He ended up on the pretty used up tires at the end of the day. But he's got a fast car and a good setup for here. Let's check with Randy Pemberton on Harry Gant's strategy. Well, just to let you know how good Gant is running. About three laps ago, we put the watch on him. He was still running 2440, and that is getting around this racetrack. As a matter of fact, that is quicker than the fourth or the third place car qualified, Bobby Labonte, here on Friday. So the Goodyear tires doing their job, and Harry Gant's making the most of it. Yeah, they said that Harry had everybody covered by a couple of tenths, maybe even as much as three. So. Uh, he can back up to where the rest of them are running and still be uh, faster than most everybody else in the field. That's the way it looks at the front of the pack as they move up on Randy McDonald. You know, I've seen Harry run this racetrack so many times, and he always runs well here. My fondest memories of Harry running here are when we run right up next to the wall, just scraping that Dover down sign off the wall all the time, and Harry Gant right up there again. Yep. High Groove Harry. That's him. 
A little further back in the field, Hermie Sadler is mowing him down. He moved past Dave Rosendi's a minute ago, and now he's coming up on Johnny Benson. Well, Johnny Benson's certainly running quite well, but 25 cars on the mission. He's going through there just like a, a knife through butter, I'm telling you. He's, he's now a top 10 car. Yeah. From I'm dead last. Yes. That's impressive. Of course, you got to remember something, too. He's got to keep the hammer down the way Harry Gant's running. Uh, if you linger in traffic very long right now, you've got a chance of going to lap down the way Harry's out front and pulling away from everybody. Hermie is fifth in points, one point out of fourth, and only 75 points out of third. So if you're looking for a point race, folks, uh, I think we may have us one here after this race. <laughs> Excuse me, make that 79 points out of second place. Very tight from second through fifth. How's our friend Kenny Wallace? Is, uh, has anybody heard anything from him since he made all those changes on his car? Well, he's had to come to the back of the pack. He's up to 28 spot right now. We asked Jeremy Sadler, when you have bad luck, is it more frustrating when it comes toward the end of the season than at any other time? Well, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's any more frustrating. You know, you just wish that, you know, maybe, you know, with all the hard work you do and the effort you, this team puts behind this deal that, you know, it would work out a little bit on the racetrack more than it does, but, you know, we're all uh, fighting hard and, and trying to keep our chin up about what's going on, and like I said, it's not that we don't have a good running race car, and, uh, and, and hopefully, uh, with four races to go, we can, um, you know, have it show up on the racetrack. I'd like to finish strong and get some momentum here in the next season for sure. Last top five for Sadler, Watkins Glen in June. Trouble on Kenny Wallace as uh, Harry Gant has just put Kenny a lap down and that car fell way off the pace. I don't think there's anything wrong with Kenny's car. Uh, mechanically, I don't think it's handling very well. I think that just shows you what uh, Harry and, and uh, Ricky are just running so much quicker than everybody else right now. Ricky Craven's taking a look to the inside on Harry Gant right now. He moved up on him two or three times and really got up under him where he could have made the pass while he checked up on him. I think Ricky just wants Harry to know that uh, Harry better not slow down, buddy. If you do, I'm going to pass you. That's, that's youth. So of the top five, six of the top six points, oh, Kevin LePage on pit road. Oh, he was running bad. as high as third. Too bad. Got to get more stuffing for the teddy bear. Of the top six point guys, Dodder got caught up in that crash. Hermie Sadler had to start in the back. He's coming to the front. Kenny Wallace, a couple of pit stops for handling trouble. Chad Little kind of moving around midfield, 19th place. David Green had a flat tire, had to stop. Only one. There's Kevin LePage coming out. Had to get tires, 24 seconds. Of the top six in points, only one's having what you call a great day, and that's Ricky Craven in the number two car. Oh, well, Ricky's in a perfect place right there. He's letting Harry Gant kind of get everybody's attention. That car is so bright. I mean, when they look in the mirror, they see Harry Gant coming. He's just riding along here, but he can close in at will. See Harry push up in the middle of that corner right there? That's where Ricky's really getting. 62 laps on the board. Ricky Craven chasing Harry Gant. We'll be right back. The amazing Split Fire Spark Plug won a United States patent. Does it really work? Is it that much better? It's guaranteed. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. You'll feel it work. Guaranteed. A 4.8% gain in mileage. You'll save because it works. Guaranteed. There's nothing like a split fire. You'll get more power and more mileage for your money back. You'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. No matter how much you know about cars, there are times when you could use a little friendly advice. At Advance Auto Parts, we're trained to answer almost any question about cars, including how to reattach a parking brake retaining spring. The time has come for the cordless power roller from Wagner. It's so quick and easy, it can cut painting time in half. So get your hands on a real value, because the value of Wagner keeps on rolling. Leave it to Peerless Faucet to create a shower so smart, it can not only sense when a toilet has been flushed, it can also adjust the water temperature accordingly. Scald Guard technology by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Right. 
Their brothers, TNN, tonight. Welcome back to Dover. We've been caution free since lap 39, 67 laps on the board. And uh, here's a look at Harry Gant. Started first, currently first. He's been first a lot. That's what we're showing yeah, here. He has, and I'll tell you what, he's going to have his work cut out for him here in just another lap or two because he is coming up to the tail end of the field. And there are some good cars in that. In that so-called tail end of the field. Well, Darrell, what happens here is these people see Harry coming. They don't want to go a lap down, so they're going to race as hard as they can to keep him back as much as they can, but that's some real good race cars there. Second man in point standings is right up in that group just ahead of him, fixing to go a lap down, and Ricky Craven is right there to take advantage of him. Now, Gant is now running about 2490. That's about half a second slower than when Randy reported to us earlier. Yeah, he slowed down a little bit, and uh, yeah, I want to, Harry's a cautious driver. We know that. Pretty cautious driver. But you talking about being cautious. Look what happened to Ricky Craven when they got in traffic. He is not taking any chance whatsoever. No, he's well back of Harry Gantt. You see yeah. Gantt coming up on Bobby Dodder and Stevie Reeves. He has about 15 car lengths. But you watch how soon this uh, gap closes between the 7 and the 2. Even though they, uh, there's there's a lot of lot of space between them. It'll close up in about a lap. You see Bobby Dodder giving way there. He's letting Harry have that outside, but Harry don't really want that outside. No, he so don't. He's very close to a dangerous spot on the racetrack when you move up that high. All right, now here's Harry Gant. Watch how far back Ricky Craven got in traffic, lapping yeah. Dave Resendies and some of these other cars. He's sitting there right, and he does not like what he sees. And of course, that's letting Terry, uh, Bobby Labonte close up on him now. Back to fourth place. Mike McLaughlin, Larry Pearson, and Terry Labonte. In that last shot, you can see Ricky Craven kind of do his hand out a little bit. That's to relax that grip he's got yep. on that steering wheel. When you walk around the outside of these lap cars, you really have to hang on the wheel. Well, it's, it's really tough when you got his car. As good as his is right now, knowing this racetrack the way you do, knowing that anybody could take you out at any second, so you got to be awfully careful. A couple good runners here. Clyde McLeod was the crew chief when Todd Bodine won here, took out his notebook, set this car up for Mike McLaughlin. And I think McLaughlin came in here knowing he was under the gun a little bit. It's his second trip to Dover. The car's won here. He knew he needed to do well here, and he's given that uh, Team 34 car a good ride. Yeah. I think the 34 car is... is Todd went in the way he did in that car. It put a lot of pressure on Mike, but I think Mike's starting to come around. I really think he's going to really be good in that car next year. He's adapted well to the bigger, heavier car from the modifies he was in previously. Well, Randy's got an update on the tire situation. We need to throw down to Randy. Randy? Well, I just want to let you guys know, up and down pit road before the race, they speculated they could go around 75, maybe 85 laps of green flag racing on these tires. They can go about 110 laps on fuel. So uh, we're looking for green flag pit stops here for some of these cars pretty soon. Dave Resendiz was just in, and uh, he took on uh, right side tires already. I just... The, the tires are excellent this time. The Goodyear tires, they came here with a little different combination than they had in the spring. And uh, I'm really impressed with the tires this time. They're, they're the best they've been here in a long, long time. And uh, now they're going to tear the racetrack up and redo it. So we'll have to go to a <laughs> new tire deal again. So. But still, the tires are excellent this time. Mike McLaughlin, who's had eight top ten finishes in his last 14 races. That's fell, back to, fell back to 13th and is now climbing back up to 4th. That's impressive. Look at Larry Pearson trying to go on the outside there. You see McLaughlin just move over a little bit. Terry Labonte sitting there. They call him nice man because he has a lot of patience in bad situations. Lapping underneath Troy Beebe in the Taco Bell 93. back of the battle at 15th position. Yeah, these cars are moving as hard as they can go right now because the lead car is right behind them. Yeah, this is the part of the race where your crew chief is calling you and saying you need to pick it up just a little bit. The leader <laughs> is on the same straightaway you're on and you need to pick it up a little bit and you're screaming back in, I'm doing all I can do. Dennis Setzer is 14th in the alliance number 59. The Bayer Ford for Chad Little in 15th. 
second vein, number 32, that's Dale Jarrett. And the bunch of Torme, 57. Not, yes, he is on the lead lap. Jason Keller, he made a couple of pit stops, but all under the caution. He is yet on the lead lap. Well, Randy LaJoy, uh, you know, as good as he ran early in the year, uh, he has really struggled the second half of the season, and he just went a lap down there a bit ago. Now, these cars battling here are only three seconds from going a lap down. Well, the nice part about it, uh, this group of cars right here, look, they were in the group that uh, Harry Gannon's putting a lap on right now, and they moved away a little bit, so they have a little in reserve. They weren't running quite as hard as they could, but they better keep the pace up so Harry Gant does not wait on many people at over. No. 18 cars on the lead lap. Rodney Combs is the last of those about to go a lap down. Dale Jarrett running right in the midst of that pack in front of Jason Keller. We asked Dale if he was going to continue and run the Bush Series some next year. Yeah, we are. Uh, yeah, I like to keep 12 or 15 races going. I enjoy doing it. I think it makes me a better race driver, so I'm going to keep running them. Harry Gant from our Ray Bestus Brakes aerial platform. Ray Bestus, best in brakes. Giving you this look at the high banks of Dover Downs. It's Harry Gant, you'll see how he's opened up his lead on Ricky Craven and Bobby Labonte. There it is, half a straightaway over the second and third place cars. See what happened there is traffic allowed Harry to get away from uh, Ricky, but also it's allowed Harry to experiment a little bit. You watch him move around in the turn a little bit more, uh, taking a little bit different line he was earlier. He doesn't have the two cars sticking his nose up under him every time he does that now, and he's able to pick his lap speed back up. It's good to be out front like that, like Harry is and in a good race car and nobody racing you. It gives you a chance to, to find a little bit different groove or a little bit different line and adjust for what tire wear or what changes the car are going to without somebody sticking their nose under you all the time. Well, Darrell, when you have a car as close as Bobby Labonte is right at that particular point on Ricky Craven, what it does, it changes the airflow over the car and makes the car either loose or make it push a little bit getting in the corner and it really slows the front car up some. Well, and you're going so fast here, you don't need any distractions. Somebody in the, in the back in the mirror is a distraction. Jeff Green driving uh, Pat Davidson, CNC bank car out of Wilmington. Bit of smoke out of that car and he brings it to pit road. There's a good little race car driver, Jeff Green. He's from Owensboro, Kentucky. That's David's brother. Uncle Mike's good friend. Uh, we all kind of grew up at home there together and they started their careers at Whitesville Speedway in Owensboro, moved to Nashville. Uh, I think he's a, a real talented young driver. You see Harry Gant moving in on the uh, J.T. Keller and Fixon go right on by. This group right here, great race car. Chad Little leading this group there in the 23 car. And Dale Jarrett are certainly great race cars. They've been right up front so many times here. You see, he's just tearing the field down. Harry Gant, when he gets into that mode, he's something to deal with. Well, his car is excellent, and the tires are working so good. I, I just want, I, I don't want to rave about the tires, but they're the best I've seen here in years. Two and a half seconds is Harry Gant's lead. Let's see now as they move on uh, David Green, if he loses any of that to Ricky Craven. Darrell, the only thing is, it's, all these cars have the same tires that Harry Gant has on them right now, and he, yeah. he's overhauling them. Yeah, he does. Good tires, good car, good driver. That's a hot combination today. Now, Harry will take his time, but one thing, when he gets an opening in these, on these cars right here, he'll put as many a lap down as he can because you never know when you might have that flat tire like they, uh, David Green did a while ago. Yeah, and you don't want to have to race any of these guys later on. It'd be better to have them a lap down, don't have to race them. Uh, he has not made a pit stop in this race, even though we've had four cautions. You now we're 90 laps into the race, and uh, I'm, he's still right there. Ricky Craven is closing. As Gant tries to move under Dale Jarrett, not this time. Slower car, Brian Donnelly there. Now, Mike, the people back home will probably say, why doesn't, why doesn't Jarrett get out of the way? He don't want to go a lap down. He's racing as hard as he can, and he's going to let Harry Gant have as much racetrack as he needs, but he's not going to give him anything. The most sickening feeling in the world is to pull over and let the leader go by, being courteous, and the next time by, the caution comes out. <laughs> and your crew's mad. They're raising cane with you. Why didn't you try to hold him up? <laughs> I know. I've been there. 1.7 <laughs> seconds is now Gant's lead. Well, we're battle at. for fourth place. Mike McLaughlin still holding off Larry Pearson. Just barely. And Terry Labonte. 
Now you're talking about distraction. That's, that's exactly what Pearson's doing there. He's dropping out of the view of the mirror there, and he's going, where is he? Where is he? And then sooner or later, he'll make a mistake, and, and I think Pearson will get under him. Yeah, he will. And, and trust me, going into these turns at the speed we go into them, when you know, don't know where that guy behind you is, it worries you to death. Here goes yeah. Pearson. You don't have to look in the mirror now. You see him out the side window. Yeah. Now these cars have dropped to 11 seconds behind the leader, and you see Johnny Benson of the Staff America 74 has passed Labonte. I'll tell you what we're going to find out today, folks. What kind of mileage a V6 will get at Dover. We haven't seen that for a long time. It's been a stop and get tires long before you run out of fuel. So today right. we're going to finally run a fuel stop, looks like. Mike Wallace has just taken Barry Owens' car to the garage. No brakes for Dover. Johnny Benson now moving up behind McLaughlin, trying to make that move on the inside, like Pearson did. I think he's going to go, well, Stevie Reed's going to come into play here. I don't think yep. he's going to be able to make that move on the inside. That 34 like to turn sideways in. The tires are probably just about to the point where they're ready to make the pit stop. I'll tell you something, y'all, had, I had noticed, but I had just picked up on the 44 car, who was over a half lap down to the leader a long time ago, had chased down the lead pack to get one of those laps he lost back here if things keep going the way they are. He doesn't have to stop under the ring like these guys did. You see Benson just passed it well there. The 34 car of uh, McLaughlin looks like it may be just a little too loose to drive fast through the corner right now. Yeah, and he's pressing. He's running as hard as he can right now, and that that's, makes it worse. Harry Gant is having a heck of a time trying to get past Chad Little here. Uh, as you speak, he goes right on up there and takes that spot. <laughs> well, it's not <laughs> over yet. No. All she did was clear her throat. She didn't sing that folks. <laughs> yeah. You get pinched down on that inside with it this long into a green flag run, and it's hard to make that clean pass. Now, Chad is doing everything a lap car needs to do. He is giving the leader room. But like you said, he's not making it easy. Yeah, and it's also doing something else to Harry again. It's making him bind that car up in the corner trying to get off there, and they can use the tires up pretty quick. The other thing it's doing is making Gant's lead disappear. Ricky Craven is now just three-quarters of a second behind. Boy, this right here is when, the, when you're the leader of the race and you just, you, you're just you just about ready to bite the steering wheel in two because you can't get around a guy that you know you're faster than. I'd already been spitting plastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, Baker, your whole left side would have done been out the, side, out the window of the car waving that fist. <laughs> Halfway next time by as Harry Gant, Ricky Craven, and Bobby Labonte leave the field here at Dover Downs. And Dover Downs, here's your mid-race report brought to you by Stanley Works in New Britain, Connecticut. Stanley, helping you to improve the value of your most important asset, your home. Harry Gant has been the only leader of today's race thus far. At halfway, average speed, 109 miles an hour. Four cautions for 14 laps and eight retirees. Mike, a whole bunch of the front car, uh, cars running up near the front are starting to make your pit stops now. Larry Pearson's been in, Dale Jarrett. And you see uh, Chad Little just got his hand up to tell uh, Ricky that he's going in a pit. And uh, fall. oh, here's the leader in the pit. Tough stop on Larry Pearson, 30 seconds. Bobby Labonte just led his first lap. He got by Ricky Craven just a few minutes ago. Randy and Harry Gant trip. Well, it's a scheduled stop, obviously. Larry Pearson is just in. So was uh, the uh, 74 car of Johnny Benson Jr. Four and a full load of fuel is what they're speculating. Terry Labonte, mind you, only took on two tires just a moment ago. Right side tires already on the Mannheim Austin Chevrolet. The lefts are going on the Ed Whitaker machine. Left side lug nuts being tightened, trying to get every drop of fuel in. It's a fuel test from here on in, guys. They're waiting on the fuel. He's down and away. Daryl, the one thing that Harry Gant does not want to see now is the caution flag because uh, they've put two laps on him while he was in the pits. Yeah, I, I just don't think I'd Here's take the, on four tires. <laughs> not under the green. green. Not under the green, not the way he was running. Here's Bobby Labonte in in the Dentine Pontiac and Ricky Craven, the two race leaders in the DuPont Chevrolet. Right side for Labonte. Boy, that slow down pit road. Look, Ricky looks, <laughs> looks like he's out of fuel. The speed limit. Tim Fita was in. I want to get out and push you. I want to try to help Ricky get down to his pit. Bobby Labonte takes on just two tires. Goes back in the race. Bill Parsons is in. 
White Rose Collectibles holds. And here's Craven. Chassis adjustment at the left rear and two tires. Well, he's away. Let's go to the garage area, Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike Wallace has parked his car for the day. Last time we talked to him here, Dover was in victory circle, but not today. What happened, Mike? Well, it appears we had some type of motor problem, Glenn, going down the back straightaway. We got an oil leak early on. I thought our oil tank was a little too full. So we come in and drain a little oil out of it, and the car was back up to seven. You know, we definitely had a fast enough car to win the race, but unfortunately it wasn't to be today. The FTP brakes Chevrolet, and uh, this wasn't made for two races at Dover, I guess, but... We're doing well. Carl and the kids are at home. Say hi to them, and uh, we'll hopefully have that Hallig Meyer Four Thunderbird running good tomorrow. Okay, good luck to Mike. Tomorrow we got trouble on the racetrack. Troy Beebe has folded the Taco Bell car up into a fajita in turn one. Boy, that's a lot of damage to that car. The right front is really torn up. Yeah, it really is, and this, this makes uh, Harry Gant's pit stop even longer. This was either a big break for Mike McLaughlin or a really tough one. He was on pit road when BB hit the wall and went straight on through. See how they score it, and we'll see if McLaughlin is indeed still. He was the race leader. See if he is still on the lead lap. You know, there one thing, Bobby Labonte took on two tires, and now he could come in and get two left sides yeah. and not lose the time that Harry lost. Yeah. And the race leader is Hermie Sadler. Mm. Well, that could just be a matter of, of uh, Mike coming down pit lane the way he did. I don't think Mike will lose only a couple of positions because of that. I think you're right. We will double check. That's the, the way I'd score. Let's show you what happened to the California driver, Troy Beebe. Wow, he's loose there getting in the corner, going up towards the wall. You can see the left front slap real hard. Hard lick. That, uh, that kid has taken some hard licks in his time since I've known him. Okay, he's loose right there, getting in the corner. He's in trouble. He's out of the groove. The car starts around. That's a lazy-looking slide, but, boy, it hurt, happens in a hurry. Yeah, and he just was high enough getting into turn one there that he gets up in that, what's no man's land, and the back end comes around. And old Hermie Sadler from last to first. I tell you, that's impressive. Look how narrow that car is on the left rear there. It's about half as wide as it should be. Glenn is in Hermie Sadler's pit, Glenn. And Hermie brings the Virginia and Forever Chevrolet in for their stop. You know, that uh, little accident he got in on the first lap really has turned out to be a blessing because he came in a couple of times, topped the fuel tank off. He was able to stay out there a little longer than some of the other guys. The car's working awfully well. They plan to only to do four tires, no chassis adjustment, four tires and fuel. Tell you what, that's an awfully strong race car. be interesting to see now if he's able to hold the rest of those guys off. Burned his tires up getting up through the pack, coming from last position. But now he'll have four fresh tires to be out first. I tell you, it might be Hermes Day. A uh, bad lug wrench problem on the left front of that car. Mike McLaughlin gets in and out, and as does Kenny Wallace. And Hermes Sadler still in, still with trouble. Let's go back to Glenn. Well, Mike, they've got a, a spare lug wrench behind him here, but he's uh, choosing to use the wrench that he's got. I don't know why he didn't, uh, didn't put the other one on, but, boy, that's a big, big, bad, bad break for him. Put him way to the back of the pack. Now he's got to burn those tires up again just to yeah. get through traffic. Good break turned into bad. Well, it's not as bad a break as Harry Gant. Gant made his pit stop under green. Part for the right. Point. Caution, many of the drivers had made green flag pit stops, got themselves down a bit. Bobby Labonte is up on the lead along with Jason Keller. The two car, that's Ricky Craven, Mike McLaughlin in 34. They are posting Randy LaJoy with that group. This is all unofficial. Hermie Sadler and Joe Bessie, who had that caution on the very first lap, never lost a lap. And then the cars that will start ahead of them on the tail end of the lead lap. Those will include Johnny Benson, now Harry Gant, and Kenny Wallace. One lap down, they're looking at... Uh, Dick Trickle, Bobby Hillen, Phil Parsons, Bobby Dodder, Dennis Setzer, Tracy Leslie, Terry Labonte, along with uh, Larry Pearson, Dale Jarrett, Jim Bound, Chad Little, and Elton Sawyer. They're all being shown one lap down. Let's go to Glenn. Well, Mike, Hermie Sadler brought his car back in under that caution after he had the problem with the left front. I know now why they didn't have to change the lug wrenches. The problem was not with the lug wrench. They had a cross-threaded lug nut on the car. They couldn't get the old left front tire off. They came in, finally forced it off, put a new left front tire on, 
sent him back out, so everything's okay now. I tell you, if that's going to happen, it couldn't happen at a better time because he got to do it under caution. And that happened under green. He just simply had to go back out there with that old left front tire on. So uh, good break turns into bad, turns into good. Well, Jason Keller on the point behind the Pontiac safety car. Ray Best is best in brakes, giving you these looks at Dover Downs. Here are the cars lined up on that lead lap from the leader on back. Jason Keller, 57. Ricky Craven in second, Mike McLaughlin third, Randy LaJoy in fourth. In fifth, Bobby Labonte, sixth, Hermie Sadler, and seventh, Joe Bessie. Boy, Harry Gant huh. stunk up the first half of the show and yeah. now finds himself in deep trouble. Yeah, well, that's what happened. And didn't do anything wrong. No, that's what happens when you have green flag stops. So uh, four tires up under green, if he'd have took two, he'd still be stinking up the show. <laughs> You're right. If you want to call it that. Well... Darrell, the one advantage he has, though, he has the fastest car in the field. Oh, yeah. He's, he's certainly going to be up there where he can get that lap back, assuming we have other cautions. Well, that's the other possibility. See, there's uh, Johnny Benson right behind the safety car, and then Harry Gant behind Doug Hebron. Benson and Gant and Chad Little. Now with the scoring update, they're shown as the cars, the three cars that are on the tail end of the lead lap. So if they're able to stay out in front of Jason Keller on the restart, and there's another caution, they can come around and he'll be in a position to race the leaders. Yeah. And a lot of time, 84 laps left for it to happen. Oh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. There's no question about that. It's exciting to see. I know Harry can get out front. It's just if he can get that caution. One lap will go racing. We'll have a TNN Extra Wednesday night. That's, yes, Wednesday night, November 2nd. TNN Extra, the ASA Las Vegas 300 from the Landmark Hotel in Las Vegas. I just don't think I'd like to go there after working all summer long, all racing my little heart out all summer long with a little bit of change in my pocket. I don't think I'd want to go to Las Vegas. I think I'd rather go somewhere else. Well, you see, you make a pit stop, and instead of four tires, you draw four cars. <laughs> okay. Or put in four dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Three dollars. Did you hear what Mr. King ever said? <laughs> just a little bit of change in his pocket. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, I'm glad we brought that up. I know it's like, tell this real quick. You know, Baker was talking about hand signals and all that. We were at Martinsville several years ago. Baker said, I've made a new deal. I've made a com commitment to myself. I'm not going to get upset anymore. When people don't do what I want them to do, I'm not going to get upset anymore. We roll off. Now, folks, we haven't even taken the green flag yet. And he has his whole left side out of the car, arm, fist, and all, shaking at somebody because they bumped into him, buffing his tires off. <laughs> that was Mr. Calm, cool, and collected with his new policy. This man can get more left side out of a race car than anybody I ever saw. <laughs> okay. And believe me, I've seen okay, it. Okay, <laughs> we got a good race here, folks. We're fixing to get back to action. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daryl. <laughs> Jason Keller has the lead for the third time in his bush racing career. And we're back under green. Johnny Benson up front. Harry Gant and Chad Little want to get back on the lead lap. As does Kenny Wallace. Kenny Wallace, too. Harry Gant's making a move on the inside of Hebron down the back straightaway there. He wants to get out there and try to get back into contention and make that lap up. Hebron is on the tail end of being two laps down. Jesse Keller just put the 23 car lap in. Yeah, he'll run out of dimes though when he catches that seven car, I think. Johnny Benson's running very good, but look at Harry Gant. Get this forward thrust off that corner there. I mean, that is a fast race car. These cars are on the tail end of the lead lap. As is Kenny Wallace. Ever on is two laps down in the 75, the Food Country car. And 57, the Budget Gourmet Chevy. There's your leader, Jason Counter out of Greenville, South Carolina. This is probably as much pressure as the driver can feel right now. When you don't have a car, Kenny Wallace, for instance, hadn't been very good all day long. Driving is just hard as he can go to try to stay ahead of the, of the leader to get that lap back. It puts a lot of pressure on the driver. Kenny Wallace probably got the luckiest break of all in all this. He really did. Clearly a lap down and nearly two with an ill-handling car. And now because of the timing of that caution flag, he's on the tail end of the lead lap. You know, Mike, it's good to see J.C. Keller running well this late in the race. He's had a very fast car on qualifying many races, but to run this well later on in the race, he's got to feel good about this. Okay, that's a good run for him. The Gourmet. 
budget, budget format. But you wouldn't know anything people, about people the budget, who, but the budget People who format. do their own shopping <laughs> find that in the freezer case, Daryl. You put it in the microwave? Yes. <laughs> you can? You put it in a microwave, I might have experienced it at some point in time. They black flag Stevie Reeves. Uh, lost the tailpipe. Ricky Craven, so where is he? Ricky Craven just made a move on Jason Keller. I believe it slid down and off to the end. Yeah, this is lost the tailpipe. Where is it? I know that's what those other drivers are hauling right now. I yeah. bet one of them wishes they could see it. <laughs> one of those <laughs> up front in front of the leader. Speaking of Ricky Craven, look how he is moving through this traffic. He just passed uh, Jason Keller and then just went by... Uh, the 38 car like he was stopped. He's right up on the back of Kenny Wallace now. He is the new leader. A very determined young race driver out of Newburgh, Maine. And very talented. Look at him under Kenny Wallace. This will put Wallace a lap down. And TIC Financial for Bill Martossi. I'm sure uh, Kenny's thinking right now, I, I held on longer than I thought I would anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the good part, Ricky Craven now, he knows that he has a race car that he actually run Harry Gap down with uh, earlier in the race, and he's sitting there with new tires, good race car, and he's moving through this traffic. 75 laps to go. Ricky Craven leading Jason Keller and Harry Gant and Johnny Benson get back on the lead lap. Monroe. Welcome back to Dover. I'm Mike Joy with Buddy Baker, Daryl Waltrip. As we watch Ricky Craven, the eighth race that Craven has led this season in Bush competition. They ran, oh, car hard into wall, 71, the teddy bear car, and another Whoa, car spinning. we have one spinning. That's Hermie. And the third car is in it. Looks like Larry Pearson. Well, that's the break. You know, when somebody has bad luck, somebody has good luck. That brings the seven car of Harry Gant right back up in the fight. And Johnny Benson. And it also, it, it points out what a bad pit stop will do for you. Harry Gant gets his lap back. And does Johnny Benson just ahead of him. And it's off to the Teddy Bear Hospital for Kevin LePage's car. That was a hard lick, uh, yep. Mike. He went in the wall hard there. Uh, something. He's had. He's made several green flag pit stops here. Enough. I think, I think something happened to the right front of that car. All right, I'll show you what happened here. There's the damage to Hermie Sadler's car. And there's LePage. Hard into the wall. I, I, something looked like maybe a right front tire. Then Hermie got tagged back here by, I think that may be Larry Pearson. I can't tell. Yes, it is. And uh, got tagged and spun around, but he didn't. I think the damage came right at the tail end of the wreck there when he got into the uh, 71 car as it came down the racetrack. Well, Darrell, Kevin lost every bit of the driving ability of that car. When he hit the wall, it mashed the right front end on that car, and he lost every bit of the steering on that car. So he just come across there. He was a missile from then on. Talked to him yesterday. Real excited about his chances here after an eighth-place qualifying effort and after having some tough luck back at Richmond. And as he has helped out of the car, we'll take this break at lap 134 from Dover Down. Out of his car on his own power and then was helped to a stretcher. He's uh, complaining of a pain in his leg after that hard hit into the wall. It's uh, maybe one more look at it here. And most of the leaders have made pit stops under this caution. Well, he's already taken off up the hill there, and then something happened on the right front, like I said. Darrell, it looked like the right front tire was flat because it was smoking way before yeah. he got to the wall. You see Hermie slide through here, slide through, hadn't hit anything yet at uh, 92 car. Looked like he may have clipped to the left front, but I don't think he did. Right here is where he got his damage, right at the tail end of the wreck. So Kevin, I don't think that car is hurt. Yeah, Kevin got him right on the left rear quarter there and did quite a bit of damage to the left rear. So they're taping up the rear of Herbie Sadler's car. Meanwhile, Ricky Craven, who had been the leader, was the first car on pit road and took four tires. Glenn? Well, Hermie brings it back. He put on right side the last time they checked the car over, and they did indeed rip that rear panel off. It was flapping in the breeze. New left side this time. Don't see any more damage to the car. Now Bobby King's going to make a chassis adjustment to the left rear, maybe to get that thing dialed in. That's the first, that's the first time all day they've had a chance to make a chassis adjustment, and Hermie pulls away. Six and five laps to go. Joe Bessie's had an extended stop working on the right front of his car. We'll get the details when we come back.
Welcome back to Dover Downs. For information on Featherlight trailers, call 1-800-800-1230. Featherlight, official trailer of NASCAR. And except to go back to green in another lap or two here after uh, Kevin LePage's car was hauled to the garage area. Kenny Wallace on pit road. Here's Glenn. Well, Mike, they're still adjusting on that car. He got right side tires. Now they're putting left sides on. They had a major chassis adjustment to the left rear, so he's still fighting an ill-handling car. But uh, I tell you what, to be only one lap down, he's done a pretty doggone good job with that thing. He's in 16th place right now. Yeah, you know, it, he did do a good job because he stayed out there in front of the Jason Keller for several laps, longer than I thought he would, with a car that's not working like he'd like for a day. One lap to go. And uh, you see they're still working on right front damage to Joe Bessie's car. He was one of the cars on the lead lap when we uh, went back to green the last time. But they're trying to get that right front fender either pulled off or they had it taped down. Nope, going to send him out as we get one to go. So Bessie is now, I believe he is still on the tail end of the lead lap, but just barely. Now Johnny Benson has moved up to fourth in the order. After uh, pit stops by some of the leaders, Jason Keller's leading, Mike McLaughlin second. Neither of them have ever won a Bush race. Third is Bobby Labonte. Fourth is Johnny Benson. In fifth is Ricky Craven. In sixth is Randy LaJoy. Seventh, Harry Gant. Eighth, Hermie Sadler. And ninth is Joe Bessie. Those are the cars in the lead lap. Well, Hermie, let's put Hermie back to ninth as he's still in the pit. Yeah, he just came back down for some more. Uh, look at that rear end damage he has. I think it's okay, though. Boy, Johnny Benson's been on a tear these last three races. Eighth at Bristol, fourth at Darlington, sixth at Richmond. And could have won Indy. I was watching that yeah. race, and dang, gone. I was pulling for him. He did a great job. He uh, got a clean pass there on Mike Wallace and had to race one, cut a tire down. Let's uh, get an update on Kevin LePage. Here's Randy. Well, it's still preliminary. Uh, Kevin LePage, it, it appears, uh, may have lost the right front tire. He hit very, very hard. Uh, complaining about pain in both of his legs, but uh, still speculative at this time. They have talked to him. He's coherent, but uh, a lot of pain for Kevin right now. Thanks, Randy. Well, the good part, we sent him walk to the stretcher, so whatever it is, it's torn ligaments or something minor. It's nothing big, I don't think. Pace car is in. 60 laps to go. but Jason Keller's powering right up the side of him. Larry Pearson. <laughs> Lost it, saved it. Yeah, he's trying to get down in line there, I think, and somebody just give him a little nudge. That's, it's tough on the restarts. His buddy said no. Nope. All right, Keller establishes the lead with Laughlin second. Watch the right side of your screen. Yeah, did a good job of hanging on to it, yeah. buddy. That's, a, that's no man's land right there. That's two wrecks with no impact. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly what that was. All right, lead lap cars now stretching out from Chad Little. There's still Parsons going past Little for 11. In our early race uh, setup, the two and the 70 and the seven are at it already. And that's probably where it's going to come down to. Look at uh, Bobby Labonte. He's right in here with the champs moving to yep. second right here. He's really getting around the racetrack well. He is third. Jason Keller started 22nd and has the lead. Now, Pearson must have had a tire down, buddy. He's coming on pit lane here. Yeah, he's got a lot of damage to the right side of that car. Yep. Jason Keller's best finish, sixth at Bristol three weeks ago. You know, buddy, when they test tires, they ought to test the sidewalls up to see if they can take a little bit more abuse on them sidewalls from rubbing into things. You got that right. <laughs> Here's Randy. Well, they're going to guess on it, guys. He, uh, the radio communication was not good. They're going to go ahead and change right. Tough break for Larry Pearson on the lead lap until that caution. And uh, just the day's getting worse for him. Pearson will drop a lap there. As Keller stretches it out on Mike McLaughlin, Bobby Labonte, Johnny Benson. Then Ricky Craven and Harry Gant. Ricky's put a little distance between himself and Harry Gant. Ricky got new tires. Harry only got two that time, so we'll see what happens. Here's how Mike McLaughlin's race has fared. He started 13th, led this race at lap 109, and is currently second. His car is just a little bit tight, Mike. Uh, Bobby Labonte runs right up on him in the middle to the exit of the turn. I think that uh, McLaughlin's car is just a little bit tight. It seemed to work good in one and two, but it seemed to be a little slow in three and four. 56 laps to go. 
says about eight or ten cars in this front group here. Any one of them could win. Johnny Benson very fast. You look at Ricky Craven making a move on the inside there to move up into the fray. These guys are really going at it. Just behind them is Gant, really moving up I, I, there. Away to the wall goes Bobby. Is that no, Bobby? Excuse it's me. McLaughlin. Oh, Mike Whoa. McLaughlin hard. Bobby Labonte got a nose under him off the corner here, and uh, I, I, I was, I was afraid of that. That is the hardest hit I've seen since Ted Musgrave got the wall at the same spot here in June. He nailed it. He didn't give uh, Labonte quite enough room to get down. Labonte had a nose up under him. He didn't. Oh. Lord, he took the whole nose off. Remember a year ago in March at Rockingham when Todd Bodine driving a similar car had the same kind of hit and took the right front corner off. I don't even wonder where it is. I'm under there somewhere. Wow. That's that's incredibly hard. It looks like the engine block is the only thing that kept that thing from being deformed further. I'm telling you. Let's show it to you and try to see what happened here. He just got down. He, okay, Bobby's under him there. Looks like actually I don't even think they touched, buddy. No, I think he was just trying to he was trying to get in front of him and didn't quite make it. Wow. He was slow down here in three and four. And Labonte was eating his lunch coming out of four down here, and I think he just got that nose there and Mike didn't uh Mike didn't get didn't know what to do. Let's run this real slow, see if we can see contact between those two cars. I don't, I don't think they ever touched. Okay, you see distance between the two there. They're getting awful close there. They're close. I think. Yeah. Hard to yeah, tell. Yeah, boy. Yeah. That's too close for us to call. You make your it, own decision. It on didn't that look one. like they touched, but I can't imagine that they didn't. Yeah. Right. You know. But that's the that's the worst thing about this racetrack is a guy gets that fender right up to the quarter panel. Do you let him go or do you cut in front of him? McLaughlin had had a string of finishes better than Benson's. Third at Indy, fourth at Michigan, fifth at Nazareth. Ends up hard into the wall here at turn one. 53 laps to go. We'll be right back to Dover Down. High atop Dover Downs with a brand new Route 1 turnpike here in Delaware. Makes it speedier getting down here from Wilmington and Philadelphia. Uh, just off of turn four there, Ray Bestus brakes, giving you these shots. If you see the one mile asphalt speedway and the horse track inside run harness racing. Mike McLaughlin hopped out of the ambulance, gave Glenn Jarrett a thumbs up, walked into the care center. He is okay. I don't, that's a torn up race car. He hit that wall a ton. Look at how the rear end's moved over. Oh yeah, and all the, on left side. The left front's gone. The left front is tucked all the way up under the car. That's why I, when I said, where is it? It's tucked up under there. There is Bobby Labonte. See right next to the P in Pontiac, there might be a little paint scrape, but that is all there is, and we don't even know if that came from this incident. No, it's, it's really, hard really tell. hard to tell. I know I sit at home all the time and say, oh, you know he hit him, you know he hit him, but <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell at the, from the replays we've seen, and if you assume he did, but I don't think if, if it did, it was where both drivers were saying, hope we don't touch. Well, we'll hope to get a word with Mike McLaughlin once he's released from the care center. Tomorrow here at Dover Downs, the Split Fire Spark Plug 500. Presented by Pep Boys. You'll see all that action beginning here at noon Eastern time. Jeff Bodine has the pole, and Dick Trickle will start alongside in the front row. Ward Burton and Mark Martin in row two. Brett Bodine and Jeff Burton in row three. Kenny Wallace, Rick Mass, Todd Bodine, and Rusty Wallace were the top ten qualifiers for tomorrow's Winston Cup race that you'll see live right here on TNN. Yep, you don't have to watch all this today. We've got a seat open up here tomorrow. Well, you know, I know you like the one you've got starting, for Sunday. I'm starting 35th, and... That's not a bad place to watch a race from. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's check with Glenn. Well, now, here's a guy that I'm glad to see smiling and walking out of there. Mike, that was an awfully hard hit. First of all, you're okay. Yeah, I'm fine. I want to tell Dad, everybody concerned. I'm all right. Uh, Fiddle Fiddle High Tool Chevrolet was running good. Uh, I guess Bobby and I had contact, but I'm sure it's just racing because I know, he, you know, nothing uh, was intentional. Just a hard day racing. Well, we just looked at a replay. We've looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. We couldn't tell if there was any contact at all. If there were, it had to be very slight. It was just a brush, but I mean, you're going so fast here, uh, that, that's all it takes. But we'll, we'll put it all together and go to Charlotte and see what we can do there. Well, we're glad to see you okay, and better luck next time. Thank you. Well, we've got a lot of talent and a good attitude. Yeah, for a guy that just hit the wall as hard as he did, uh, he's, got his, he's got his act together. He's, uh, he, he expressed himself very well, and he, exactly like he said, if they touched, it was just a touch. Poised to win, perhaps, his first Bush Grand National race. 
And instead, the car uh, goes back up to the Mooresville Racing Industrial Park in pieces. Yeah, you know, a couple of guys that have made pretty impressive runs here also is Phil Parsons and uh, and Bobby uh, Hill in here. They're ninth and tenth now after all these uh, cautions and wrecks. One lap down. One lap down. Jason Keller's the leader. Bobby Labonte is second. Johnny Benson is third. Ricky Craven is fourth. Harry Gant fifth in this topsy-turvy race. Sixth. Uh, having that lug nut problem repaired is Hermie Sadler. Seventh. Randy LaJoy. Now, let's explain that one to you because you'll remember we told you Randy got lapped on the racetrack, and he did. They went by him like he was pretty well stopped. But then as all those leaders made pit stops, LaJoy was on the racetrack just ahead of Mike McLaughlin. McLaughlin came into pit under green. The caution came out in turn one. LaJoy came around and got saved on the lead lap. So he's on the lead lap, and still, Joe Bessie, despite all those pit stops and all that duct tape, he is still on the lead lap. And he was a kid that, that when they dropped the green flag, didn't take it. Spun he into the wall. Turned right into the wall. Well, I think Hermie Sadler, he's in sixth place right now. He's been in two major wrecks and still in sixth place, so he's, he's doing quite well today. Having a good run here today. Yeah, Hermie was in the opening crash and then the crash up here with the uh, pace. Yeah, he's had the most obvious performance. He, he is. <laughs> but when you start in the back two or three times to work your way to the front, that's going to happen. Today's copyrighted telecast of the Splitfire Sparkplug 200 is authorized under broadcast rights granted by Dover Down. It is intended for private use of our audience. Any retransmission or reuse of pictures, accounts, or our descriptions of the event without the express written consent of the National Network and World Sports prohibited. Light is out atop the safety car and on pit road, Kenny Wallace. TIC Financial Ford going to make one more stop. He is 15th, a lap down. Napa, we keep America running. Here's how they're running. As we get ready to go back to green with 48 laps to go. This race has had more plot twists. Boy, it has. Than a Robert Ludlum novel. Leading has not been always the best place to be either. No. That's Phil Parsons right alongside Keller, the matchbox car, trying to get back on the lead lap. What's going on with Joe Bessie, Randy? If you can believe this, guys, I just talked to the crew. They said the car's running the best it has all day. Even with all that sheet metal damage, I asked them, is anything bent underneath the car? They said, absolutely not. The car's been a little tight. It's freed up now, so we'll see what we can do with them. Wow. Okay. We got a little problem back here on the restart. The 64 car is a lap down. He won't get out of people's way so they can get up there for the single file restart. Uh, Hermie finally tried to squeeze by and won't let him by. The green is out. Here we go. There's about 15 cars here. Any one of them can win this race. 46 laps to go. Bobby Labonte works underneath. Trailing Jason Keller. Craven, Harry Gant, a smooth restart, and the leader, single file into three. Riding with Craven. Yeah, you're riding with Ricky Craven. This car is so good in the corner. We can barely tell he's even in the corner. It looks like you're taking a picture of the straightaway. He's running so smooth through the corner. If David Green holds his position, Ricky Craven could pick up 63 points. That's half of David Green's lead. There, that's Bobby Hill, and he is a lap down, but he's running as well as the lead cars right now. So he's gonna stay up in there to get by him. You just have to outrun him, he's not gonna give you anything else. That's the Bill Papke car number 99, formerly driven by Robert Presley. What's there, Chevy? The 64 car is coming on pit. Uh, the black flag is the reason why. Well, I believe it's just as you described. That was uh, not getting out of the lead lap line for the restart. See Johnny Benson there. He's trying every way in the world to get by Hill. And both of the cars are pretty evenly matched. Ricky Craven running quite well in the center of the corner. Also. It really is. He gets a real shot right through the middle of three and four there. Uh, Harry says, I'll just go by on the outside. Thank you. One thing about it, he won't, he won't back up. He'll give her a try. Partisan crowd here at Dover. 
Coach Ball always pulled for Harry Gant. He used to run about 550 mile races here by running up around on the rim. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't surprise me he passed Ricky on the outside. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, Harry Gant's like vintage wine. I'm telling you, he just gets better as he goes. The man is a real master at driving a race car. I wouldn't show Ricky Craven my best move, though. I hope that wasn't it. Because <laughs> if it was, Ricky Lay, he may come back and close the door on him. I'd love to see Harry just kind of hanging, you know, run a few races a year just to we can see him run because certainly he is still competitive but he says no he's not even going to the bush clash even though he has a spot in it in february in daytona when he hangs up his helmet that's it well i just think that's the kind of intensity you have to have for racing like you can't do it on a part-time basis you got to do it all or, or give it a good point and uh, especially when you get to be harry's age it, you got to be out there every week to keep the keep everything working right yep and I, I'm not putting Harry down for his age, don't get me wrong. I'd be the no. last guy to talk about how old somebody is. <laughs> no, he's, he's the oldest 25-year-old I know. <laughs> I, I hope I look that good. Well, I don't look that good now. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's a special guy. I've known him for a long time. Yep. I hope he continues to come to races anyway. Mainstay of NASCAR is modified in old late model sportsman division. The Eller Buick and Pontiac, those orange number 77 number cars. 77, yep. yep. Keller there. He's starting under a lap car there. Yeah, that's Bill Parsons. That's Bill Parsons. He, ooh, a little Whoa. contact there. That was just, we don't have horns on these things. Every once in a while we get attention. You have to kind of make a little gesture like that. Well, well that's, that's two young men right there that are both uh, fighting for the same territory. And Phil is on the tail end of the lead lap. So he'll give Jason the bottom. Now watch where Phil goes. Yeah, once you get to that outside, mm, not too good. So now you see why Phil was trying so hard not to let that happen. Here comes oh, Johnny Benson. Benson. Oh, Benson. Oh. <laughs> wow. What a power move that, that was. was a move. Yeah. Harry Gant took now, advantage of it, too, and got by Hillen. If you were Bobby Hillen and going underneath, you know what uh, Phil good? Parsons, you couldn't imagine anybody be further under you. No, you couldn't, but you know what was good about that is Benson kept going. Yes. If he had tried to stop that move, he'd have wrecked them both, but he kept going and he took the position. It was his best and only chance he, to do he, it. He had probably. no choice if, as long as from up here he had no choice. Here's the like lead. Bob, looks like Bobby Labonte's closing in on Jason Keller now. Yeah. Well, the laps are ticking away and everybody's starting to think about how am I going to win this race if you're Ricky Craven? You may be thinking about, I just want a good finish today. Well, Johnny Benson gets my vote for the cool move of the race right there. That was there. it, my friend. What I liked about that, it was cool, and he made it. Yes. And Hermie Sadler's back here, too. I just saw him dive under somebody coming off turn four. He ain't done yet. Nope. There's Hermie. Trying to pull up on Elton Sawyer. Before credit for it. You know, he had a lot of rear end damage, Hermie Sadler did, but it was down below the rear spoiler. So the air is still going over that spoiler and giving him good down pressure in the corner. So the car really hadn't lost any aerodynamic feature. Now, we may get a look at the back of Hermie's car. Without that tail light panel and bumper cover, might you get a little bit of ground effect, a little vacuum effect from the air coming up and under that car? Boy, Bobby Allison beat me to death one time when he <laughs> lost a bumper. That's the fastest race bumper car gate. ever run again. Yeah, I remember bumper gate down at Daytona several years ago. And uh, <laughs> that's been discussed on many occasions. Folks, in the, in the, if you weren't there, in the Daytona 500, Bobby Allison's car had the rear bumper uh, come unwelded or unbolted or something. Anyway, it fell off. And, and he uh, went on to win the race. Big time. He was almost a lap down and run us back down and right. won the race. Those were the facts and the prevailing theory as uh, Johnny Benson looks underneath Bobby Labonte, not that time. Yeah, you know, it's a uh, good thing Labonte uh, didn't see the move he made on, his, on, on the <laughs> McLaughlin. 99 car, or he would have not given him a little more room. Oh, yeah. The, the prevailing theory, as Buddy pointed out, was the loss of the bumper improved the underbody aerodynamics yeah. on Bobby's car that day. He let the air out from under the car. And at 200 miles an hour, that can make a big difference. Yep. Now here comes Craven. Looking at Bobby Hillen. Let's get out of the Ricky Craven pit. Here's Glenn. Well, we wondered if Craven was going to just run for a position. John, you're standing, you stand to gain a lot of points here today. We can maintain where he is right now. We want to win the race. Good. Ricky is the most competitive person I've ever worked with. He wants to win. He's got 
got the car to do it. Right now it's getting a little bit tight, and I think part of that has to do with we're just tucked up. There's no air the downforce on the nose of the car, but the car's good, and we just got to race to the end. We got better tires than everybody but the seven. John told me that the car was as good as they can make it, so uh, it's all up to Ricky now. Well, you could see Craven make the move there. He finally got by Bobby Hill, and he is, I think, one of the fastest race cars on the track, but he was held up there for about five or six laps. The good part is he has time to close in on the leader before the end of the race. Yeah, it just shows how hard it is to pass, buddy, but I, the thing that he did is cool. I like it. He goes into three, he pushes up to the outside of that black line now, where he gets a little bit better bite, and then dives off the four underneath the guy, a lot like what Bobby Labonte did to McLaughlin earlier, but they made it. 29 laps to go. Ricky's fast, he's closing right up on Harry, very fast. All right, let's look ahead from fifth place Ricky Craven there, the green car number seven, Harry Gant, the Mannheim auction Chevy in fourth, Johnny Benson, Staff America Chevy in third. Bobby Labonte, the Dentine Pontiac number 33. That's your second place car. And Jason Keller, who has never yet had a top five Bush Series finish. Yeah, you know, Mike. Front. Oh, oh, Bobby Labonte hit the fourth turn wall hard. Second time, buddy. He brushed the wall earlier. Scrub marks on the rear of his car. And he has flattened it out. Well, that wasn't very pretty. I was just going to say, we should give, we should mention Jason Keller a little bit more than we have, but then this happens, so we'll get back to that. Let's show you. Look, it's like he just gets up there. The car will not turn won't right turn. under the wall. Well, right. the guy that's lucky is Johnny Benson. Yes. Now, what that was, to anybody who don't understand over, he got out of the groove into the select part of the racetrack that has a sealer on it, and it's just like hitting sand up there. It just hard to go straight out. And I know he's got to be really disgusted with himself right now. And if the racetrack had been two lanes wider than it is, it's still he still would have got it. That's it. Jason Keller with 25 laps to go leads the field here at Dover. We'll be right back. Have you ever seen anything more amazing than Little Caesar's Italian sausage pizzas? You might be good to Broadway. Remember me to Harold Square. Tell all the gang at 40 seconds to get I will soon be there. No. Italian sausage pizza. Loaded with sausage, green peppers, and onions. The newest from the whole menu of Little Caesars Pleasers. Any two for $9.98. Product guarantee. Pizza, pizza. Or one for $5.99. Pizza. If you're thinking of getting a new battery for your car, Walmart has good news for you. Now, every new Energizer or Champion Silver Core car battery from Walmart comes with a two-year free replacement guarantee. That's two full years with free replacement. And one year free replacement on every new Omega battery. So come on into Walmart for the batteries and the prices you can always count on. Always low prices, always Walmart. The Slick 5300 today on TNN Motorsports. You're watching TNN, the number one source for country music, entertainment, and information. In 1990, world champion Julio Cesar Chavez defended his title against Meldrick Taylor. As the final seconds ticked away, Taylor was clearly ahead on points. Then it happened. Oh, damn you, Taylor! Two seconds left, the referee stopped the fight, and Chavez was still champion. Chavez Taylor 2, unfinished business, one of four championship fights Saturday, September 17th, live on pay-per-view. What makes the perfect family room? Sports on a big screen TV. Games for the kids. Plenty of good friends. Great food, ice cold beer on tap, and dirty dishes that disappear all by themselves. That's what you'll find in the perfect family room. That's exactly what you'll find at Beef O'Brady's. Good food, good sports. You're riding with fourth place Ricky Craven, 19 laps to go. Bobby Labonte took his car straight to the garage area and then headed to the Winston Cup garage for final practice. Dave Resendiz is also going to the garage. 
in the picture out the windshield. Ricky Craven can see the three leaders right ahead of him. Jason Keller, Johnny Benson, Harry Gant. Well, it's a race to the finish now, and I don't think it's going to change much. Ricky Craven, though, he has them in sight. He's gaining a little bit on the lead cars right now. And that momentum, man, when you start coming in on those lead cars like that, either you'll make a great mistake or you'll up you up a little bit. Well, I tell you right now, I'm pulling for Jason Kelly. I don't, uh, he, uh, we haven't talked very much about him, and he's leading this race handily, and uh, I think he's done a whale of a job, and uh, I hope he wins this race. Well, I think everybody wants to see him win, but you know, the great part is, that car quit right now. He's had a great day, All right. no matter what. He proved that he can run, not disqualify. He's up front. Who do you think will win it, buddy? Me? One of those four cars. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> well, you, the you're, the guy, most, you're the most opinionated guy during commercials. Yeah. And here we go. The other guy that, I mean, give a call to Benson. Look how he's running. Well, and uh, yep. he hadn't won a race either, so I'm for one of the two non-winners. I love Harry to death, and I'd like to see Ricky win, but uh, they, they, those two boys in front, are, they throw a whale of a race. Yes. There's somebody in Taylor for pulling for this guy so he can put on a roof for him come Monday. So I'm, <laughs> I like to see Harry Gant close it out with him in here. I, 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 still, yeah. I still pull for him. I, I don't think. know. It's, it's, I'm, man, I'm all messed up. Now. Well, I'd love to see one of these guys win their first race, but we're going to watch the two of them for the next 20 years. I want to see Harry Gant's yeah, final victory, and I hope we haven't right. seen it yet. Ooh! Ooh. Whoa! There whoa, we go. That's whoa. that mistake. Oh. Yeah. Jim Bound took Jason Keller upstairs and Four. dumped it into third place. Well, oh, so now, God. who do you want to see win the race? <laughs> the guy who finishes first. Yeah. I can't believe this. That's pitiful. Well, I'm telling you, he got up there in that loose stuff. Uh, the 63 no, 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 no. car. 363 car went up with You know, it. I wonder. Now, wait a minute. Uh, they have black flag Jim Bound, by the way. But I wonder if Jim. Oh, Tracy Leslie's blown up. Let's go to Randy. Well, uh, we're getting ready to talk to Steve Addington, the crew chief for Jason Keller. We want to let you know what he was saying over the radio to the poor kid who just got possibly taken out of his first career win. He was just telling him, kid, keep digging, kid, keep digging. And this crew is absolutely heartbroken down here, oh, guys. Yeah. And they should be. Here's Johnny Benson holding off Harry Gant and Ricky Craven. I want to, I'd like to look at that replay again because I wonder if Jim Bound might have thought the leader would go low. I don't think so, not okay. when he was on the outside. <laughs> well, let's let's see here. Now, there's Bound just ahead of Keller. There's Bound into the corner. No. no okay. He's down low there. No, that's just... But let me tell you something. Unless you've driven a race car, you don't know everybody's behind you every time you look up in the mirror. Yep. I don't know if 72 will make it back to pit or not. He may. Bound is black flag. And Tracy Leslie's trying to coast around to the pit. No caution. 11 laps to go. Johnny Benson is the man on the point. And Jason Keller has run him back down now. He's right on the back of Craven's back bumper there. This car is flying up through there. Don't count him out yet. Yeah, I, I don't want to count anybody out, but it's hard to pass. We've seen that all day. Ten to go. I would say Johnny Benson, he has a lot of experience in the ASA division and all. He knows how to win, so he's going to be tough to pass. You're right about yeah. that, there. He's probably having flashbacks of Indianapolis right now, too. Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> what do I have to do? Gracie Leslie has made it to the garage. Well, no matter who wins, it's been a great race. Yeah. Stanley Tools car, Larry Pearson. Trouble. Don't make it to the fifth. There are six cars on the lead lap. The ones you're seeing, plus Hermie Sadler and Randy LaJoy. Seventh, a lap down, Bobby Hillen and Joe Bessie, Phil Parsons, and Terry Lamont. Benson looks like he's opening it up just a little over there again. It does. Harry's car's got that mid-corner push again. It seemed to got that, it got that as it ran along earlier. Yeah, and too, when you start trying to make up distance on the race car in front of you, he's running his groove, he's getting in the corner his own way, picking up the throttle his own way, the back car's trying to gain all the time, and you really can abuse the tires a little bit. Well, I think what Harry would like is to have enough room here to work the outside is what he'd like. He'd, he'd get the guys behind him pouring us back, I think he'd like to work the outside. Craven will back. If Craven doesn't get up under, get up under and mess with him, I believe Harry's going to work hey, out. Hey, Benson's that. lead has evaporated. Yeah. As he tiptoes past Jim Bound. 
Gant is right there. It's the element of surprise. Not only look, look at how bright that seven car is. How could you surprise anybody with that? No, the, the, the <laughs> element of surprise is that I thought I had him beat, but I don't. Yeah, look at look at this crew here. Oh man, he's he wearing his fingernails out there. Harry's doing down there one and two, and he seems to be a little tight three and four. Well, I'm sure Harry would like a little more traffic to have to work through right now because Denson's car is just as fast as Harry's. It'll, it'll come down to who makes a mistake or who gives it away or who wins this race. It's, it's certainly not going to go because of a, a better race car. Five laps to go. Man, I'm going to stand. Y'all mind if I stand up? You can do it. Everybody else is. I just thought I would too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a grandstand full of them and nobody's in their seats. Ricky's closed. Ricky's closed back up here just a little bit too. He's close. Wow. Four laps. Look at this crowd here today. They're seeing one whale of a race, like you say, Daryl. The camera hit don't get much better than this. Oh, yeah. And it's only 200 miles. Four laps to go. That Johnny Benson going. Oh, right. Well, I, bet he, I bet he wishes that traffic wasn't up there ahead of him. I'm, I'm sure he's not going to be happy about that. But if he can work through these two lap cars without losing anything to Harry, he'll be okay. And Fedewa just ahead. Fedewa will run the Winston Cup race tomorrow. This now could, you this you could see Fedewa just get down on yep. the white line there. Get out of the way. Benson goes to the outside. Harry Gamp closes right up on his back bumper. That's Kenny Wallace there. They, out, they got out of the way and said, let's yep. race for it. And Ricky Craven has nothing for the two leaders. No. He's the third place car. Period. There's Craven. Two to go. Look at that crew, man. Are they behind this driver or what? Well, they've had some good runs and they've had some great finishes over the last few weeks. Okay. Youth and exuberance or old age and treachery. <laughs> oh, Harry's going to give it one more look down here and then say, oh, I guess they're going to let the kid have it. I don't know that Harry Gant ever says that. But it looks like Denson may have the measure of it. One lap to go. The white flag is in the air. Benson takes it down to turn one. Got him. Whoa, Harry bobbled just a little bit there. He didn't pick the throttle up quite as clean, so I don't know that he's going to get a run on him going down in the street. He got it. Well, Harry really takes it deep into turn three. Pulls up on oh, Benson right. off the corner, and Johnny Benson becomes the 17th different winner in the Bush Series in 1994. The that's race in the Calment takes a checker. That's exciting. I, I'm, I'm glad for him. He's a good kid works hard and they've had a good year they started off a little rough in that car but he's really come on strong the latter half of the year glenn jarrett well steve bird is being congratulated by everybody hey man this nice motorsport seems just great johnny's a high driver and he proved it today you know we push it on tires a little bit but well, i'll tell you we're one happy bunch been a while since you've been to victory lane this is great huh birdie well it's pretty good and bring a rookie around like johnny he shows that he's really good i'm sorry we had motor problems at the beginning of the year but we got it now and I'd like to say hi to my wife and get you home we're tied here tonight hon <laughs> and i guarantee you steve bird will party johnny batson harry gant ricky craven jason keller and hermie sadler the top five we'll be back to talk with them after this there's no place on earth that I'd rather be than out in the open where it's all plain to see that the land is pure, untamed and free. There's no place that I'd rather be. So come on along and head for the mountains of bush, dear. Head for the mountains, it's cold and it's smooth and it's waiting for you. Come on, head for the mountains of bush. I want more power. I'd like better mileage. Split Fire doesn't look like any other spark plug. It doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. A 4.8% gain in mileage. With Split Fire, you'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You'll get more power and more mileage for your money back. You'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. Racing legend Richard Petty gave us an incredible challenge to try and start his toys. All my toys. 
all at once with a single die hard. So we hooked up all nine engines and the die hard started every one. All at the same time. But would it still have the power to start this big toy? Sears Die Hard. More power when you need it most. One of these hammers is jacketed in high-impact polycarbonate. The other one is broken. The fiberglass jacketed hammer from Stanley. Peerless Fawcett didn't come up with the idea for a spout long and high enough to reach over and into large objects. We merely adapted it for the kitchen. High-rise faucet designs by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Today's exclusive coverage of the Splitfire Spark Plug 200, presented by Track Auto on TNN, has been brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. And by Splitfire, the patented performance spark plug. It only costs more till you use it. Well, there's the best seat of the house in Splitfire's winter circle. Here's Glenn Jarrett. And Johnny Benson crossing the car. He's going to give a look at a big celebratory wave there. Johnny, I guess this really makes up for Indianapolis, doesn't it? Well, I don't know. I'd have liked to have won Indy, too. You know, Space Motorsports team did a great job. Steve Bird did a great job calling the pitch. You know, one stop, man. I can't believe it, you know. Staff America Chevrolet. It's flawless. Ran good all day. And a couple guys had some problems, you know, made it easy for us. But um, I tell you what, we had a great day today. You know, we got another race tonight, so <laughs> we might go do, do some racing at my home track in Berlin Raceway. Well, you got, you got behind a little early on there. You were in danger of going another la a lap down, but uh, you kept pumping hard. Did you ever give up? Did you ever think that, well, maybe it's not going to be my day, even though I've got a good car? Well, I'll tell you what, I still swear we were in the lead. We should be ahead by a lap. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what uh, happened there, but, um, you know, it was a great day for us. You know, I'm glad all the fans are here to see it, and, uh, you know, we'll be home here shortly. Well, we're going to have to let him go, guys. He's got to get out of here. He's got another race to go tonight. Let's go down to Randy now. Ricky Craven after a third-place finish. Uh, championship chase still on for you. You look a little disappointed, but it was a heck of a run for you. Well, I guess that's the big picture, you know, but we've always run so good here. It's home for DuPont, uh, refinished, cry talks. And uh, we're going to win one of these. We just, we've come so close the last two years, and... Uh, I'm real proud of the guys. I got an awesome team, and they, their championship mater material. Maybe it's a little too early. If it doesn't happen, well, it wasn't because we didn't try. But uh, we're going to make it tough on the 44 team and and the rest of them. And uh, I'm just glad that we got a chance. Well, you picked up 50 on them today. You're 92 points back. That's the way to do it, I guess. Now uh, we got two weeks off, and told the guys we need to be with one within 100 with uh, three to go. We're there, and uh, we just hope for the best. Good luck in the next uh, three. And we'll go back upstairs to Mike Joy. We'll try to get a word with Jason Keller down here in just a moment. Johnny Benson in victory lane. And I think certainly one of the keys to the race, the keys to why this guy is so good, Darrell. Watch Johnny Benson again. Go, <laughs> go under Bobby Hillen and Phil Parsons. Yep. That, that was your cool move of the race, and I totally agree. I mean, that, that shows the aggressiveness that he has. Also shows the car control he has. He took that car right in there. It's all under the white line. Stayed there and made the pass and that's that's what's important that moves like that to get you to victory lane. that's right well it shows a lot of talent and uh, the young man obviously has a lot of talent there's a lot of success in asa birdie uh, always does a good job with yeah. the car most everywhere uh, they're going to be a great team in the future too daryl i know you've got to go practice for tomorrow's winston cup race good luck thanks for joining us again today this is so much fun this is exciting buddy Sorry I had to pick on you a little bit today, pal. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back to Dover Downs. Look ahead to tomorrow and talk to some of today's top finishers after this. Here's to the Cowboys, still a modern-day hero. Standing up for what's right as he rides across this land. He still earns every dollar to pass through his hand. I bought my car new in 1970. I drove a hockey team 190 mile round trip three times a week. 
Avalon Formula 3 from Texaco. And when I reached 300,000, I thought, I've got to be a pretty good car. No other leading motor oil offers more complete protection to help your car run better, last longer. At 600,000, I thought, maybe it could be the Havilland. Havilland Formula 3. Add more life to your car. Get a free Havilland racing cap of your choice when you buy a case of Havilland. Win Dixie discounts next 10% every day. I saved almost 30 cents on just one bag of potato chips. And that's good because some people can't stop at one chip. I can't stop at one bag. Help yourself, I got a whole bathtub full. Win Dixie discounts greeting cards 40% every day. This $3 card cost me $1.80. And that's good because I buy cards for everyone. Happy birthday, Mom. Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday to the world's greatest boss. <laughs> Alternative math. One for sandwich, plus one hash brown, plus one coffee, equals one ninety nine every day. Add it to your morning at Burger King. We may not be the world's number one fast food place. It just tastes that way. If you think this is a broad selection of tires, wait till you go to Pep Boys. Get $40 back on a set of four Michelin, Uniroyal, or Futura tires. $20 back on any two. Come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. Next to 3.30 inside Winston Cup Racing, hosted by Ned Jarrett. Catch up on all the silly season rumors and everything else that goes on in our sport on the Nashville Network, 3.30 Eastern Time, following today's live broadcast from Dover. Well, of all the couldas, wouldas, and shouldas, well, Jason Keller might have won today's race. Randy's with him. Boy, you got that right. He's getting a lot of congratulations, guys going by, uh, everybody coming up and shaking his hand. Jason, I know an utter disappointment for you before you really showed him. You, you had a heck of a car today. You did a great job in the car until the last few laps he, uh, got away from you. Yeah, you know, that's a shame. The budget going my car was running great. And I want to say hi to all the you know, people back home, the budget going my and my mom. And, you know, the crew did a great job for me. We got down a little bit early, and, you know, it's just a wonderful day for us. It ended a little bit bad for us, and... Uh, I'm not going to gripe and whine about it, you know, I think I got a little bit of a bad deal, but, uh, you know, I'm going to take the fourth, be happy with it. I hope there'll be more times to come, you know. The, we started this crew and, you know, and the team by myself, you know, me and my father, and I think you're going to see great things out of them. Quickly, could you explain what happened there between you and Bound? Well, I went, I came off for one, I mean four, and he motioned me high, and I don't, you know, and I, he had plenty of room, and I committed myself high. And then we're going into one, he just moved up. I don't know if his car got loose or what, but... Uh, that's the brakes, you know. We'll get them next time. The budget going to make car ran up front, and uh, we'll be there all. I hope, I hope for a lot longer to come. But you know, I just, I want to dedicate this race to my crew. They did a great job. Well, he'll be there for a long time to come, no doubt about it. 24 years old, youngest guy in the show today, Glenn Jarrett. Well, another young driver who had a good day and a tough day, as you can see, he's getting a little oxygen right now. Worked awfully hard today, but uh, Hermie, all things, all things considered, it came out pretty well. It really did, Glenn. You know, we put ourselves in a tremendous hole during qualifying when the cool went bad. I, mean, I just fought all day long. I never driven so hard for an entire race, but track position killed us all day. You know, we came in leading that time and hit two lug nuts round off, and you know, it just seems like it's not meant to be for us to get up there and win one. But overall, I'm really proud of this Virginia's beloved Sitco race team. We needed a good run to keep our momentum going for the last part of this year, and uh, I'm excited to get in with the top five today. Well, Hermie, our Randy Pemberton mentioned at the top of the show that there are rumors circulating that you may leave this team. Can you comment on that now? Well, I did uh, announce today that I wouldn't be coming back with Don Beverly Racing. It's not something that, you know, I'm really interested in talking about right now. It's just uh, sometimes you can see in this business when things are not going to work out completely. And uh, I just want to get into a situation where everybody's happy. Everybody is uh, fighting for the same goal. But I can't take anything away from Don Beverly. Uh, my whole Virginia's for love of Sitco Race team that been behind me 100%. I just want to see what's up there for Hermie Saddle and make the best decision I know how to make. And uh, you know, I got a lot of looking to do and a lot of talking to do. And uh, but right now, I'm really proud of these guys and concentrating on these last three races. We sure got to try to win this championship. Well, thanks, Herman. The best of luck to you. That's very well spoken. And we're going to hear this guy speak a lot in the future. He's also one of the brightest young stars on the rise. Now, let's go back up top to Mike. And Glenn, he's not out of this point chase. He's 171 back. He picked up 40 points today and moves to fourth in the standing. Johnny Benson's your winner. Harry Gant second in his final Dover appearance in the Bush car. Ricky Craven third. Eating into that point lead heavily. Jason Keller picks up a fourth place finish, and Hermie Sadler is fifth. Randy LaJoy is sixth. Bobby Hillen seventh, a lap down. Phil Parsons eighth. Terry Labonte, Joe Bessie, the top ten. Then Dale Jarrett, Dennis Setzer, Elton Sawyer, Dick Trickle, and Chad Little, the top 15. David Green, Tim Fedua, Kenny Wallace, tough day. Doug Hevron and Jim Bound, 20th. And Randy McDonald, Larry Pearson, Tracy Leslie, 
Rodney Combs and Bobby Labonte finished up in the garage today. So did Dave Rezendis, Brian Donnelly, Mike McLaughlin, Kevin LePage, and Stevie Reeves, 30th. Followed by Bobby Dodder, Troy Beebe, Mike Wallace, Jeff Green, and Tommy Houston, 35th. Then George Crenshaw, Tommy Ellis, uh, Dick Tobias Jr., Steve Grissom, Robert Presley, 40th, Michael Waltrip, and Patty Moise, the first car out of the race. We'll have a look at the Bush Point standings and a quick look ahead to tomorrow when we come back. I want more power. I'd like better mileage. Split Fire doesn't look like any other spark plug. It doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. A 4.8% gain in mileage. With Split Fire, you'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You'll get more power and more mileage for your money back. You'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. Rangers. Cherokees. Broncos. Explorers. Pathfinders. Blazers. Any pickup or 4x4. On road. Or off. Boy, do we have a tire for you. The tough LTX light truck series from Michelin. Crew spent hundreds of hours building those 5,000 horsepower motors. I can explode one in five seconds. And when that happens, nobody eats. That's why my guys won't run anything but Fram fillers. You know, Fram gets the nasty stuff out of the oil, so I can go to the other end with my candles lit. And you know, that's in about five seconds, nearly 300 miles an hour. You can look at these guys and see they eat pretty near every day. <laughs> Poly Shades by Minwax. It's a stroke of genius. Poly Shades is rich stain and polyurethane protection in one. Poly Shades gives wood a beautiful protective finish in half the time. Poly Shades by Minwax. Your own minor league baseball team. Roughly a million bucks. The Big Shaver. Roughly 18 cents. What do they have in common? They're both worth every penny. Welcome back, everyone, to Dover Downs, the Monster Mile, the last run in the Bush Series for Harry Gant. A heck of a run, finished second. What happened? Well, we uh, tightened the car up a little bit uh, after that long run on the start. The car was running super, you know, Manheim Auction Chevrolet, and, uh, but it's favoring the right rear a little bit, and I thought uh, we might better, you know, justify that a little and equal them up, and boy, it, it got it too tight, and uh, it ran really good all day. The crew done a good job, and, you know, Johnny run a real good race. The cars were close equal, but uh, I just didn't have that... Uh, click that he needed in the corners there to be able to get up front but I would sure like to left here with a win being our last trip here in the bush car to Dover what about uh, tomorrow real quickly well we just have to see you know the track changed a lot today and maybe things will work in our favor tomorrow okay good luck tomorrow Harry get Mike Joy thanks Randy great run for Harry today here are your bush points David Green had a 133 point lead coming in here and you can see that's been cut to 108 Ricky Craven is now the second place point man Chad Little is third, or make that 92 points over Ricky Craven, excuse me. Chad Little is third, 130 points back. Hermie Sadler moves up to fourth, Kenny Wallace to fifth, Dennis Setzer, Larry Pearson, Bobby Dodder, Johnny Benson, and Tracy Leslie. The top ten in the point standings, so it is still about a four-horse race, maybe five. Give Kenny Wallace an outside shot. There's a look at that new VIP stand. They got quite a show from there outside turn four today. Here's Glenn. Well, the lead horse is still David Green, and he looks a little disappointed, but, David, you know things could have been worse. Well, I got awful close to that uh, Dover wall up there, and I tell you, you know, Steve blew up down there, and uh, I was trying to miss him, and I must have run over something, and uh, knocked a hole in that good year, and we took off Green on the uh, restart, and, man, that thing went straight, so dodged a big bullet right there. But, you know, we lost two laps trying to get in and, and get a change. The guys did it real good and uh, got back out there, but, you know, to get down two laps, 50, 60 laps in the race, it's a tough day, but uh, we just went on the car and just held our own from that point on. But we dodged a big bullet, you know, and that's what I've got to watch out for. So uh, Ricky ran a good race, and he's going to be tough, and Chad and everybody else. But uh, just dodged a big bullet right there and uh, come out pretty decent. Well, I think the next time we see you, are going to be at uh, probably Martinsville, and that's one of the places you love the most. Well, I can't wait, you know. And all, all three of these race tracks are going to be a unique challenge, and it's going to be a good battle. But... Still, we're on top, and uh, the guys are hanging in there, and, and we're, we're full of energy. We're not down by no means. 
No, he's not down. Definitely, definitely not out. As I said, he's still the lead horse, still the guy that they got to catch. A 92-point lead. I think David Green's going to be the man for the championship, guys. He's certainly the man to beat. Buddy, 17 different winners this year. Can you believe it? Oh, that's great racing. I love the Bush Grand National. And tomorrow, more of the same. Good this, racing. This Bush Series has really taken off. Last week, Kenny had to be, uh, bite his lip in victory lane. i got to bite my lip because I can't tell you about next week's big news about the Bush Series, but watch your papers. Tomorrow noon at Dover Downs. Jeff Bodine will lead them to the green flag. Dick Trickle alongside Ward Burton, Mark Martin, and Brett Bodine are the top five qualifiers for the Split Fire Spark Plug 500. Live at noon tomorrow here from the Monster Mile at Dover Down. Got a pick for tomorrow? Yeah, somebody. <laughs> what I love about you, Baker, you're just so decisive and opinionated. But look at this race. We had about eight different favorites to win it, and it all changed so many times. And well, Johnny you never Benson. know here. You never know what's going to happen. And that's why they flock to Dover Downs in record numbers, because you just never know. Today was Johnny Benson's day. We congratulate him and look forward to tomorrow. For Buddy Baker, Darrell Walter, Randy Pemberton, Glenn Jarrett, I'm Mike Joy. So long from Dover Downs. Inside Winston Cup Racing comes your way next.